What up, what up? You tuned in to the Jose Morales Podcast. I'm your host, Jose Morales. Alongside with me today is 2020 National Champ, Amy Minter. I almost said Amelia, Amy Minter. Say, what's up, Amy? Hi, how are you? So, uh, you may recognize Amy, you may be not. Probably you have for a couple reasons. She's always in the gym. She's the loudest one here when she's shadow boxing. <laughs> uh, and she was actually my very, very, very first podcast I ever did in my life was with her. I, I, I need a redemption yeah, from that we podcast. Definitely need another one. <laughs> so before we get into talking about that, um, I want to mention, I hope you guys have a great week. I mean, uh, I hope you guys are having a great Monday so far. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the previous episode with Brian and Bobby. It was a... Uh, Actually, one that guy right there, like I said, is one of the biggest um, inspirational persons that I've met that kept me motivated and kept me in check. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, but this episode, we're going to be talking about Amy Minter, everything Amy Minter. And if you are not familiar with Amy just did recently, uh, which was pretty much did the impossible. Uh, she went into a national tournament with the best boxers in the nation unranked unknown and everything no one knew who she was and she came and beat them all and didn't she just just beat them all she whooped their fucking asses so we're gonna talk about that talk about her life talk about how she got there talk about everything that has to do with amy mentor but before we get into that i want to ask amy do you have any of ritual anything you do weekly to get your week started since the people listening today is going to listen to this on a monday yeah um so what i've like really gone through in my life like as i've dealt with struggles um i've learned on how to be right mentally and that's mm -hmm. something big that i did this year and so every every morning i start off with like something to start my day off good so i do meditation which is huge it's a, yeah. a big part of my life and it's been a big part of how i got like mentally okay for boxing but um and then also listen to certain motivational things so to get my mind right you know i like to put good foods in my body i like to put positive energy into my mind too to start cool. my week off good I like that yeah so the very first podcast that we did, <laughs> this is why she says she needs a redemption. So far, redemption. she's starting off way better. <laughs> so the very first podcast, I'll give her a little bit of credit. It was my first podcast, so I was horrible myself. I but was nervous. I pulled a, I pulled a Levi, only teach Saturdays, yeah. straight posture. <laughs> and I asked her, yo, tell me about yourself. And, and look, the podcast is still out. You look and you search. Search for the very first episode. It's called <laughs> Hairstylist Gone Boxer. And that's Amy's episode. And the, this is how the podcast started. I said, Amy, tell me about yourself. And this is what she says. Literally, the first thing she says <laughs> is, I went to private school. <laughs> what the fuck? Apparently that's what you got. That's is, is it that important? That's what you got to say. I told her. Apparently it I was. told her, really, normal people. I told her, normal people <laughs> will be like, whoa. Well, my name is Amy Minter. I was born here. I mean, that's just like a normal. But I'm not normal. I'm not exactly. normal. That's you like know what that. the average person. I'm not a normal person. First thing she says is she goes to private school. So right away, she's letting you know you're not at her level, pretty much. <laughs> oh, no. That's pretty much what no, she was doing. You're asking me thinking about my life. So I was thinking about my past and the the first thing that popped in my head. I said, tell, me about, yourself. I said, tell first, me about yourself. And she thing, says, I went to private school. Well, I'm thinking about my past and being younger. And I was like, oh, I went to private school. Yeah. That's my Do me defense. a favor. Listen to the episode <laughs> and you'll see. That's the first exactly thing. that first tell thing. Tell me about yourself. Exactly I went to says. private school. <laughs> <laughs> and I was dying. When I when I heard it at the time, it didn't hit me. But when I reheard it and I put play, I'm like, I'm like, this <laughs> really said that. It was um, so bad. So another thing i didn't share i can't believe i didn't talk about this on that episode this is what it comes down to a rookie host it was my first episode but she shared about her first experience when she came to the gym but she did not share the day she ran out of gas <laughs> so i had just met this girl it was like your first time so this was like your third time in the gym i think Probably like third or second time. I, yeah, it, I was new. Yeah, it was her first or second, third time around there. It, it was under five times for sure. And first of all, I don't know why this girl hits me up. Now I get it. But at the time, I'm like, what? So she comes to the gym. She leaves. Literally like 
five minutes after leaving the gym, she's like texting me and then she's calling me and then she's like, yo, I ran out of gas. And I was like, what the fuck? Am I a tow truck driver? Like, <laughs> what the hell? Why is she telling me she ran out I of gas? I was on the side of the freeway. Yeah. And she's like, yo, I'm literally on the side of the freeway with no gas. And I was like, cool. I'm a boxing coach. Now nah, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. But I was like, all right. So I went. And uh, to save fucking Amy, she's on Highway 65 with no gas with her Jeep. <laughs> and uh, I pull up and again, her special ass car. <laughs> we went to go get gas. Do you remember this day? Yes, I do. We went to go get gas. <laughs> and then your car smelled like gas. Yeah, messed up my car. Alonzo's in the backseat. Yeah, everything is just all bad. <laughs> um, we I pull up to get uh, put gas in her car. Her Jeep is a special car, of course. That you can't just p- pump gas in it. You have to have this <laughs> fucking special little tool. Yes, tool to pump gas. <laughs> right away, right there and then, I knew, damn, what am I getting myself into? Like, man, this girl can't even have gas in her car. Now. It like, does represent who I am and who I've been this whole time, though. Yeah, it's like, look at her mic right now. It's pointing at the floor like like her chest is talking. <laughs> right there, Amy, right there. It keeps falling. There, good. All right. See? See what I mean? Special, <laughs> special. So I just had to share that story because I thought it was I, I I thought it was hilarious that I didn't talk about it the previous time. But you time. didn't know me then, and now knowing me, it makes sense. That's it makes just a me. Lot of sense. That's just me. Um, so one thing that you it, it it makes sense too because at the time with what I found out about you recently, now I know what you were going through at the time. Yeah. And now I know. Okay, now I know why she ran out of gas. Now I'm playing. <laughs> now I get like, okay, what was going on? Because at the time, I just thought it was just this blonde girl with a Jeep that didn't know how to pump gas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't either. <laughs> yeah. So, Amy, when we're the, I found this out recently at um, at Nationals one day we were talking, but I, I was with her for twelve days. So if you guys know Amy, she likes to talk. <laughs> And she was telling me all sorts of shit, like literally <laughs> talked about everything on fucking everything. <laughs> right, right in on the plane. I don't know why the fuck we said. Why did you sit me next to you, Amy? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I couldn't even sleep comfortable because this girl was taking pictures of me. She was doing all sorts of shit. But so what I wanted to say about this, one thing that I found out, you want to you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So I didn't know this about Amy until I recently found out uh, she had a whole sorts of battles to get to where she is besides the health thing. Uh, one thing that with your health, what is it that you have that you and explain, explain the, the disorder that you have oh, well, and what it is and what it does explain it. So I have stage four endometriosis. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's linked to autoimmune disease. I've had it since I was younger and as I've, um, grown up, it's gotten worse. So I was at stage one, two, three, but by the time I was diagnosed, I was already stage four. So I've had multiple surgeries and what it is, it's, it's, um, it's like non cancerous, like gross and tumors that attach to the outside of your, your uterus. But when you get to stage four, it starts spreading to like your bladder, your kidneys, your liver, like all your surrounding organs. And so, um, when I had my first surgery, it was already stage four. They had to laser cut out, like, you know, like they took part of my bladder out. They took my appendix out. Like I have, a, I have a really bad of aggressive case. So even though I'm having the surgeries, it keeps growing back. So then it causes me to have pain all the time, yeah. every day. And then it causes scar tissue because it keeps like ter- it, it, it sheds from your body every month and then it comes back. And so it just gets worse and worse and worse. Wow. Um, you told me you got a hope. How many surgeries you said you've been through? You said pretty much every organ in your body. You said, so. yeah, well, all the surrounding organs. Yeah, I've yeah, had surgery so on. Yeah, all, I, of them. all of them. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. how many surgeries do you think you've been in? Um, I think it's been like four now. I've had four, four for that particularly, yeah. So you have this thing going on with your body where your body's going crazy on itself pretty yeah. much. Yeah. And then you had like asthma, really bad asthma. Yeah. 
So I, I talked, we talked about it. It was no secret how your conditioning was horrible. Before. Well, that couldn't hide. But as far as my like autoimmune health mm-hmm. and all that, it controls my life so much, like with the pain. And then, you know, and I tried to find an escape from it. And also I didn't want to, I wanted to be treated normal. Cause like when you have something like that, it, that controls your life, you just want to feel like a normal person. You don't want to yeah. feel like this person that has this disease and you're super ill and sick. And you know, it causes you to miss work, causes you to cancel on friends cause you don't feel good. And it's hard for people to understand so and another thing coming here with coaches I didn't want to be I wanted to be taken serious I mean it's hard to take me serious to begin with and then um to have that I didn't want someone to be like oh man there's no way she can do something with something like that like I didn't want anyone to take me lighter so I struggled with a lot of things like when I first started running like a lot of things my body was going through I'd go home and cry and just it was really hard at first but I didn't I I didn't want I wanted I wanted to prove myself here at the gym and not anyone to know and be like oh crap she won't do it. Yeah, because you say you struggle with really bad pains daily. Oh yeah, every day I have pain every day. Like what describe these pains? What are these pains like? Are they like cramps? Are they like it, it depends on the aches, it depends on the day, aches, but headaches, it's the same of? equivalent of like like if you've ever had surgery, it's the same equivalent of like surgery pain that you deal with. Um, and and then when it's really bad. Uh, so I went to the number two specialist in the world and he said that like when my like pelvic pains at its worst, it's the same equivalent to like what women go through, like labor pains. So it's like, I'll be on the ground, like crying and throwing up and it's bad. It gets bad. It gets intense. So yeah. Damn. And when did it, when did this start? Like how old were you when this started? Um, it started when I was, I would say I started having issues when I was 12. 12 yeah and then it got worse, worse. and worse and worse and yeah then, and i was missed and then it just being misdiagnosed worse. misdiagnosed so around 18 and that's when it started affecting my life like i was missing school a lot um it just controlled my life I, i'd be out for maybe like probably about a week out of the month i'd be in bed and then then get back to it try to recover from it so it got to the point where i was in pain two weeks out of every month like really bad and at that point i was like this is not a way to live it's like two weeks and then i have two weeks where i felt good and so like i always knew something was wrong but like the doctors didn't know how to they can't really diagnose it until surgery it doesn't show up like on scans or anything like that and um so then once i went into surgery like I didn't get diagnosed until I was like 26. And so it was already stage four. So if they would have caught earlier, maybe they could have helped me, but it was already bad. And I was dealing with all this pain and it didn't really make sense. And when, when I went in and I got diagnosed, instead of being sad, like that, I had this disease that's not curable. I was relieved because I felt crazy being in so much pain all the time. And like, it it now made sense. It was like, everyone's saying they didn't, they didn't know what it was. Yeah, and and like a lot of girls that have had the same thing, they they're called crazy. Doctors don't believe them. They're misdiagnosed. It's in your head. Like you shouldn't be feeling pain like that. And so, um, it was a relief when I was told that. I'm like, okay, like it I'm makes not crazy. sense. Yeah, like <laughs> I'm not crazy. yeah, like it makes you sense. You start believing, like maybe wait, maybe I am crazy. Like yeah, because because and then when it comes with autoimmune, you start having all these problems. Like I'm allergic to everything in the world. She is. Oh my god. I and that's why though. Anything, that's girl. why though. I'm allergic to this. I'm allergic to that. I'm like fuck. What are you not allergic? But that's why, like, as it got worse, like, my body just, like, started having all these, like, er, all the time. Like, I get new symptoms of something. And so, um, you know, I try not to think about it too much and, um, you know, just continue off of my life because I used to focus on it too much. And then I was super just depressed. depressed. And, yeah, and, like, when you focus on something like that, it was just – So it was now it obviously life. doesn't stop you no more? No. <laughs> and, and that was, like, the biggest part where it stopped me from everything. So – when I started boxing and, and doing stuff and pushing it. So it was really hard to push through it. That's what stopped me because my health and the pain and I would try, but then I would get down and then maybe two weeks I would do good. And then I would just be wiped out. So once finally pushing through that and it took a, a good year to just push through it. I put it this way. I'm in pain at the end of the every day, like really bad, like to a point where I'm crying. I don't feel good. I was like, I'd rather be in just a little bit more pain for like all the things that I'm doing and the activities, but be mentally happy over like being in pain and not having anything yeah, going on in my life. Not being happy. And then it made me be able to mentally deal with it. So my pain has never gotten better, but my mind has gotten stronger for me to be able to handle it mentally better and, and not let it control my life so much. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Well, it's nice how you 
overcame it. That's definitely it doesn't sound nice as far as like what you go through. You know, yeah, but crazy. I honestly don't think if I I honestly think that it's made me a Who stronger yeah, person. That and beast you are. Yeah, I, I honestly agree. do, and I honestly so like with other pains and stuff, getting punched and stuff, I'm like other stuff is nothing compared to pain I felt because yeah. I have a really high pain tolerance because of it. You know, and, and there's a lot of times I'll be in so much pain inside and I'll be out here. You would never know I'm in pain. Like, I'm really good at hiding it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and I'll be happy and bubbly Which myself. you're not good at hiding your emotions. <laughs> 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 when she's mad, you can tell she's mad. Or if she's sad, I can tell she's sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because I'm usually really a happy person. Yeah. And so when you're always, like, a certain way and very expressive with your emotions, yeah. you know, it's very true. Yeah, but she does hide her pain well. Yep, but when it comes to that, it's just, you know, it was just something I'd always, so it was like this hidden thing that no one knew and not a lot of people know. I mean, more people will know now, but it was just something I never really wanted to focus on. And yeah, you, didn't, you didn't put too much. Yeah. And I, it. and it was also, I did it for myself too. I didn't want to focus too much on it either because then you make that the center of your life. Yep. And I, and I had done that, made that, that the center of my life. And I was just, you focus on it so much. Yep. So I decided to like, okay, I have it, deal with it. And try to figure out the best way to like when it turned was me accepting that I had it because before I'm like, this is not fair. I remember I used to not be in pain all the time. Once I let go of that, accepted it. I'm like, okay, this is what I got. And I got to move forward and I got to figure out how for Amy, how to have the best life with this possible. Yep. And yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. So I knew about that. Um, what I didn't know was the other thing you shared with me in Nationals. Mm -hmm. Do you know what it was? Yeah, like the like my uh, like where I was mentally, my mental yeah. health. Yeah, I think it's important. I know you wanted to share this uh, before we get into that. Why is it so important for you to share this? Because I remember I asked you, "Do you want people to know this or not?" And you said, "No, I want people to know." Well, why is it important to you? I mean, I have shared with people like personally, yeah. you know, um, but now it's publicly now people that you don't even know. is probably Yeah. Gonna know. And the biggest reason why I, I never wanted to share it publicly because I still was struggling with it. Yeah. It makes sense. To, you haven't like point. overcame it. I had to overcome yeah. it. So I still had struggle. Mm -hmm. And so that was a big part of it too. Um, but a big part of wanting, cause it's who I am today yeah. and like, of course, I wouldn't want to be put through, like, some of the traumatic stuff I've been put through. Mm -hmm. But I honestly, I'm thankful for the struggle I've been through because I wouldn't be who I am today. And I know that I would not be here and the person I am today because of it. Yeah. So it's, like, bittersweet. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. It's like a love-hate thing that I have for it. And I've learned to own my struggle. And, um, you know, and then it's really, truly made me have to face my demons, my past, and then who I am and who yeah. I, who it's made me become. Yeah, like I said, I barely found out this two weeks ago. Yeah. I barely found out. And then you hit me with a curveball. I was <laughs> sitting there and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so uh, go ahead, Amy, get started with telling us what happened, this whole thing that we're talking about. So, Tell us from the very beginning how it all started. How'd you get caught up in this situation? So, um, like, started when I was younger, I had dealt with um, sexual abuse, and um, so that was a whole start of things, which I really didn't remember a lot of it. I blocked mm -hmm. out your body protects yourself, so I blocked a lot of it out. There was a lot of things that I would get nightmares about. I wasn't really sure, and, you know, and as I grew up, I had really bad anxiety issues and panic attacks and just a lot of issues that I didn't really understand, like, why, you know, and, like, my parents like knew like they're like why, why do you have anxiety like why are you this way like why are you depressed like they didn't really understand because no. I had never told them like things that happened but I didn't really understand either a lot of it I blocked out too like I remembered some of it but then you kind of like talk yourself into it like oh it's not that bad you compare yourself to maybe other people's lives that might have it worse yeah so you know um and so there was always that and that started a whole that messed my nervous system growing up and just you know, and I think that when you've had things like that that have happened, you are very vulnerable and you put your you continuously are, are put in situations where you're like, OK, like I'm getting taken advantage of again. I'm like in a bad situation again. Explain, and, that. Um, Explain what you mean. You're vulnerable and you get put in situations because because when you've been abused, you you lose who you are. You lose a, a part an innocence of who you are as a child and you um you're insecure, like you're insecure. So you're, 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 you're very fearful. So, um, 
you know, I, you're very lost too. Yeah. So I think that I like, you know, and when you're like that, you attract certain people like, you know, and so, um, I would struggle like throughout my life being around people that would be very strong personalities. And I'd be very, just, just like some of that would didn't stick up to, for myself. Like, yeah. you know, we get walked all over you know, and I'm a very sweet, nice person. So like, I didn't have that in me to stick up for myself because I had been abused and I didn't have confidence. I didn't know who I was. So, you know, so I'd always struggled, you know, like a little bit, like more things happened when I was in eighth grade and then in high school, you know, and it's just, it's just, you know, you go on through life and you have all these things that are now like, you know, it's just piling on, piling on. And you just keep taking it all. Yeah. And, um, you know, and I think a lot of it, I try to avoid it. So I try to distract it with like, you know, looking forward to the next thing, like, you know, maybe going on vacation or going here with friends or shopping or something. I always try to distract it. Like I felt it inside, but, um, a big part of me was I'm a very happy person to the world. But when I was by myself, like at home, I was very, very alone. I felt very alone. I was really depressed and like, I felt it. And I, th and th I think that's affected my health too. Cause when you have, they, they, they work together side by side, the emotions of it. Yeah, for so, sure. So yeah. That's probably what messed up everything else. Yeah. And then, you know, so yeah. if you have a health condition that you're dealing with, you're depressed and have anxiety about that, which that's traumatic. And then you have traumatic events. So you have these two things going on. And so it's like, you're battling both. And so, you know, it makes you like, it's just too overwhelming, you know? Yeah. And then, um, this, so this started from as you were, as, as you were a kid all the way up, to through your teenage years yeah one thing after another kept happening correct? yeah yeah correct and then uh what happened when you went on you said you how did you end up in alaska um so i was it was just pretty much how did you end up there anyways like what made you go to alaska how did alaska come about it was just so um jason and i had separated mm -hmm. and it was like you know i was just i was just it's hard because that part of my life is very like cloudy because I was just struggling so much. My health was at the worst it had ever been mm -hmm. at. And, um, you know, I got opportunity to go there to work with dogs. My okay. dog is so my So that's life. how it came about. Yeah. The, so my dog, the, Shoshana, she's my life, you know. Yeah. So By I the way, there. I think you should explain to people what Shoshana, because people always think your name is Shoshana. Yeah, because my Instagram is Shoshana Girl. So who's Shoshana? Explain Shoshana to the people. Shoshana is my dog. She is she's a Belgian. German Shepherd. She's, she's a Belgian <laughs> Malinois, not a German Shepherd. I always call her that because she gets all mad. If you follow her on Instagram, she always posts things about it not being a German Shepherd. Yeah. Ever, ever, it, everyone knows I'm obsessed with my dog. And well, my Instagram was made for my dog. Mm -hmm. And so it was all Shoshana and then like, you know, a little bit of me but, and our, our adventures together. And, um, and so most of my like friends on Instagram were all, we're all dog people in the dog world. So when I started boxing more and more and posting more boxing stuff, some people were like, where's your dog? <laughs> I want to see your dog. Like literally people wanted to see my dog. They didn't want to see me. <laughs> yeah. So it was funny. So once in a while, then I'd post some pictures of her again. They're like, finally. <laughs> yeah, like about time. <laughs> about time. Yeah. yeah. I probably lost a lot of friends because they didn't want to see boxing. <laughs> yeah. So you got a chance to work with dogs in Alaska. Yeah. And, and that's what took you there. Yeah. And then I was just in a very unhealthy place. So, so you weren't in a good place mentally, physically, emotionally, health, mm -hmm. everything was bad and you're in Alaska. Mm -hmm. So tell us what happens there. So what happened? So, you know, and like when you're in that place, you, you have the want to be loved so much and be cared for so much. And, you know, and I had always been like that my whole life. Like I had always, wanted someone to save me. Like I thought that I needed someone to save me and love me. And that was going to make me happy. Like I didn't realize that I had to do that for myself, but mm. that's how I grew up, you know? Cause I, uh, I you know what? And I think I see a lot of people do that. Yeah. I don't think you're the only one that felt that way. I think a lot of people feel that way that they, they want to feel void with somebody or something or something, you know, it's yeah. kind of like just putting a bandaid on it, honestly. Because you're never really healed. No. And I think that's what you're saying that you were going through, right? Yeah. And then, you know, and then you go through, like, relationships. Like, all relationships make you go through things. And instead of 
going from relationship and recognizing, okay, like why did that fail or whatever? You just move on to the next thing, you know, thinking about yourself like, oh, well that person, there's something was wrong with them. Yeah. Not looking at yourself to what you, your, 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 what you did and just thinking like, I just got to fi find the next best thing. And, you know, and I was just in such a vulnerable point that like, you know, so someone that was like paying attention to me and being nice, like, thought they were a nice person at the time, you know, and, you know, but I've learned like through, cause I've gone through trauma therapy now. I've learned that when you're in that place, you attract certain people. So, you know, and those people know how to, they, they go through, for a, yeah, they go to a certain type of person. And I was definitely like, I'm not the person like that you see now. Like, I mean, I've changed a lot from the person that was walked in that the doors, but even more so then I was a very vulnerable person. Yep. So then you get caught up with this person mm -hmm. that was paying attention to you and you start growing a relationship with this. Yeah. Yeah. This and, and of course, like he was very nice and sweet and did everything right. And I thought was, you know, um, and, you know, a good person. Um, and, uh, but surely, but you know, shortly I found out that I, I you know, I think that's just, that, that wasn't who he was, but I thought yeah. that's who he was. How long was. did it take until his true color shirt showed up? Um, was it weeks, days, months, years? Months, but uh, it wasn't until like I had been like alone with him. Yeah, you know, because you're the only one in your family that's in Alaska, right? So you're alone. You have mm -hmm. no friends, no nothing. No nothing. Yeah, you're there alone. Yeah. And here comes Mr. Nice Guy, and then yeah. you start trusting, mm -hmm. and you grow this relationship with. What happens? Um. So. You know, shortly, like, as, you know, so it's Alaska, so you're in the middle of nowhere, right? So, um, you know, my phone didn't work. He had a phone. We kind of shared it, whatever. And um, so he became very controlling. And, um, and like, little things started happening, like, coming out. And um, so then I was staying with him. And then it just, one day, it, it was, like, a flip of a switch. He changed. And within that day, like... I was like, crap, like, what do I do? All and, right. What um, is a switch? What, what What do you mean by change? Change in what way? Um, like, what, do you, what changed? His, his just, demeanor? Oh, everything. So, he, yeah, one day we're, he was just, like, you know, happy, always sweet to me, always nice to me, very respectful. Like, seriously, like. And then one day we were out. Um, we were out, like, outdoors doing something with dogs. And, um, he just, he got really mad about me about something with, food. oh, it was about food. I was like, I was looking at the ingredients and something and, he, and then all of a sudden out of nowhere, he's like, what the F are you doing? He never cussed at me ever before. And I was just kind of like, that was kind of weird. And I'm like, I'm looking at the ingredients cause I'm allergic to things and I don't want to die, you know? And, um, and then he was just like, what the heck is wrong with you? And like, just like, just started like yelling at me and then just it was just like it was like something took over him and he just had this like dead stare and then he didn't talk to me and like he's like don't talk to me and like he just turned into this different person and then from that day forward it was a very very scary person like I, I that i did not recognize anymore it was just something switched flipped in him and i didn't know what it was and you guys were living together yeah okay so you're living with this guy and and did he let you go out? Did, like, did you no, have your so, own life still? Like, did you no, work? No, so, yeah, I didn't have a life. Like, I, you know, so I stayed there, and he, you know, so I couldn't go anywhere. Like, he he controlled if I ate or if he would take me to the grocery store or if, like, sometimes he would just sit there, take me out in the middle of nowhere and just just mess mess with me, like, mentally, like, psychologically. Um, You know, like, I am a girl from, I lived in SoCal, and he'd be like, um, oh, it's getting cold out here. If you don't know how to build a fire on your your own, um, you know, you're you're gonna probably get cold and to death, you know, and like things like that, just psychological it was little just things. Fucking with you. Yeah, messing so you, with he me. He would take you to the middle of nowhere and put you in the yeah. snow and just make you freeze to death. It wasn't snowing because at the time it wasn't snowing, but it was um, in the middle of nowhere to where you know I'm seeing like bear tracks, moose tracks, like you know, like and like dangerous animals, you know, and um, and then he would just drive off and leave me there. What? And um, yeah, he left me there one time for about like 
it's hard to know because in Alaska at the time, it's like it was always daylight at the time because it was summertime. So it's hard to know exactly. Like the sun goes down a little bit and then goes back up. But I would say about a day and a half just like left me out there. What? And, yeah. And then like, and so I'm, so right now, like, I'm scared, like, so I, so, and that's what, like, abusers do, too. Like, they do stuff, and then they do stuff with kindness, so then you're happy to see them. So he left me out there. I'm scared. I'm scared of animals. I'm scared of whatever predators might be out there or whatever. And then when he comes back, I'm actually happy to see him because I'm just like, okay, I was so scared to be out there alone, you know? Like, I had a tent and stuff like that, but, like, I didn't have anything else. And so I was just terrified. I just sat there doing nothing and just, like, hoping no wild animals came up. And so, um, you know, and so then he comes back, but that's what abusers do. Like they, you know, and you don't know this at a time. And that's why like a lot of women, um, like start sympathizing for their abusers Mm -hmm. and start, it's, it messes with your head big time. That's what Stockholm syndrome is. And, you know, it's like they, they, they do something really bad, but then they, they do something really nice. And you think that, oh, like, I think it's just because you're, you, you, they do something so bad and then now they're being nice to you. It's like, it feels good for someone to be nice to you because, like, you're feeling so awful. It's just, it's so just he, a mind. So how long did this shit last where he was doing things months, like this? Months, 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 months. And what did your family say? So, like, he, so he was very controlling. So, um, since my phone didn't work, like, my family knew to, like, get a hold. Like, my family had no idea. Like, they knew that we had a phone and he would FaceTime them and be like, here, here's Amy, you know? And, like, he'd be right there. So, like, and he'd, like, don't say anything, you know? And act like everything's fine. And so, you know, you know. And so he would tell you don't say nothing. Well, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, and he, he'd be like, you know, and he would sometimes even call my mom and, you know, and act super charming and wonderful and like, yeah, we're doing this, we're doing that, send her pictures of things we're doing and just make it seem like it was... So your mom thought you were doing amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like he was very, very good at, you know, and also he's in the military and stuff like that. So you think he's like, you know, this good, this good guy and all this kind of stuff. And, um, so, uh, it was, you know, and I was also very fearful of him. I was terrified of him at this point because he had told me at one point, like, I could kill you out here and bury you alive or bury you. You'd be dead and your family would never know where you are. They would never find your body. And he, he told me that. So I was terrified of him, like terrified. So I didn't want, you know, so I was terrified to do anything to make him mad. Like, because you would just see it. He just like he would just flip. It, it was like, it, like his eyes would change. It was like he got possessed. It was really strange. The person that he turned into. So how did you get away from this guy? Um, so what happened was, um, he actually had injuries from, um, being in, um, Afghanistan. And so he had to have a surgery. So, um, we got taken to Washington actually, um, on the military base there to, for him to have a surgery. And so he got, and so like he got approval. So the military was like paying me money to kind of be his caretaker and stuff like that, which I never got that money. He found a way to get it and all that kind of stuff. But, um, It was, so we were in Washington on the military base there. And so, of course, like, we traveled there together. But at this point, like, I was so fearful of him because, like, he was doing things like not letting me eat. Like, he would give me oatmeal packets and, like, just eat dry oatmeal. You know what I mean? Or he would, he would reward me. Like, I remember one time he rewarded me with silverware. Like, you know, and and at the time, like, okay, good. Like, I can have silver, you know, and just, like, like, even where we're staying, like, we didn't have, like, a, a bathroom, like, a normal bathroom. It didn't have, um, there was, like, a way to, like, wash yourself, but you had to, like, get water and put it in a pump and stuff like that. Like, it was a very, like, it was just, like, it's, like, something you'd see at a movie, like, where I was staying. It was really bad. And, um, but. It was on the base? Like, military base? It was no. off base. So, he, was base. Off, he left off base in Alaska. Mm. But, and real quick, another thing that made me very terrified of him was, so I, so he would leave for a long time. And so I was like, okay, let's see like where I can go. Like I try to like wander off one time and I was always so afraid of him coming up with his truck and like, and then I'm like out there wandering cause like his temper, I was like terrified of him. And, and so, um, 
And then one time I was wandering off. I had uh, my dog and he had, he had dogs. So his dogs were with me. And um, I was wandering down the road just to see like, okay, like how far, but literally a mill nowhere. Like I tried to like, there, there was like nowhere to sight. But then one day when I decided to do it, cause he hadn't been there for about like a day and a half. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to just like leave, you know, and see what I can find. See if I, if I can go somewhere, but I'm also very scared of other people out there too, because like there's like a lot of people out there, they go to live there because they're just scary looking people. Like I didn't trust anybody. Like I was afraid of him. I was afraid of someone else I might run into that could do something bad. So he comes back with his truck furious because I'm at like because I had I was clearly off the property and comes down this road and he starts um, driving and acting like he's gonna run me over and driving all crazy so like I'm like running and I move my dog over and in the process of it he ran over his own dog right in front of me and literally like you know and I mean I think that's traumatizing for anyone but being such a dog lover too <laughs> so he literally ran over his own German Shepherd his own dog um he obviously was being aggressive. I don't know what his what he was trying to do, but he was he was driving all crazy in this big lifted truck towards me, my dog. And so I'm like freaked out that my dog's going to get run over. I'm going to get run over. So I run away and his dogs, I think, knew his truck. So they were happy. So they went towards the truck instead of me and my dog are going away because we're scared. And I wish was just listening to me. And then he ran over his own dog and I saw the dog literally so get dog rolled. Died. No, I did not die. What? I saw the dog get rolled over two wheels and, um, and I was just in shock. Um, I didn't know if he was going to come out and beat the crap out of me and blame me for running over his own dog. I, I had no idea. I was so terrified. So I just was still, I didn't do anything. He came out and he goes, he goes, help me get stuff to help my dog. So I go inside trying to find like towels, the dog's bleeding. So he cared about his dog a lot. Yeah, yeah, he cared about dogs, yeah. Mm. But it turns out it wasn't even his dog. He stole it. It was a champion dog that he had stole because I was like, you need to take this dog to the vet. He would not take the dog to the vet. And I ended up finding out later he had stole that dog. So that dog was not his dog. And Shit. he did not want the owner of this the owner of this dog to because know. it was a sport dog. It was there a championship-level dog. And so um, and I was just like, you need to take this dog to the vet. And he wouldn't. So literally, like I, um, like I stayed up that whole night, just like kept listening to like I was so afraid this dog was gonna die, and so I'm just like focusing on this dog, trying to help the dog and do whatever I could, and the dog survived, and um, it, but you know, and like kind of sewed up the wounds of the dog, and the pus would come out, but um the dog had ended up getting medical att attention when we left to washington so this dog was dealing with like all this so that was one of the things too that like other than i can kill you out here and leave you out in the middle of nowhere and your family would never find you but literally seeing him run over yeah that's how you know it was like a ticking time bomb pretty much yeah like, this guy's gonna snap at any minute yeah so i was terrified i was you know like i was terrified like he would get, I, mean, I was terrified to do anything because anything I did, like just breathing, like he would like go off on me about something about. So sounds like my wife. <laughs> nah, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm fucking around. <laughs> and, but yeah, it was just really scary. And and I think too, like you're you're you when you're in something like that, you're trying. You're just in survival mode too. Yeah. And um, you're just in a different mindset, and it's just it's a very unreal situation. So you try to you you. You almost like don't recognize everything that's going on to be okay because I couldn't cry either. If I would cry, he would get mad. Oh, uh, it, yeah, it was really bad. So, so how'd you um, get away? So anyway, so he had to have the surgery. So we went to Washington. So we go to Washington, but at this point, like I'm like very like underneath him, like. I go where he goes, like, he would not let me off his sight kind of a thing, and then we uh, get on a plane, we go to Washington with the dogs, and um, we're all on the military base there, so now I'm on the military base, I can't get off base, um, just the way it works, like, like, I went in with him, and then we're staying at a military hotel on base, and he had surgery, and, um, and I was very, like, it's it's hard to explain but like at that point you it, it's part of like the stockholm syndrome type of thing you care for a person so he went through surgery and so my plan was okay he gets to the surgery and then i'm gonna leave after that like i'm gonna like leave and so um 
he went through his surgery and um and then a different person started coming out again and he started like i remember he came out of surgery and he started crying like i've been so bad to you and he he came up with this whole excuse to why he was he, you know, okay, well. he was like i had ptsd from being in the military this and that you know and i was just so confused like just very confused it's hard to explain like now the me now like i would know what to do but when you're stuck in that situation it it's it's hard to get out of it and um just the power that they have over you and so um he started being nice and like started like apologizing for everything he had done and said that he was having a ptsd he was scared of all this stuff and had like told me all this stuff so um but it was still my plan to leave after because i you know like to to be done like once we're out of there to find a way to leave and um but he was starting to be nice so i was there i helped him i helped him recover after he was like in because i was taking care of his dogs in the hotel while he was hospitalized so I, I was being a good person and, you know, like watching out for the dogs and, you know, being there because it was also, he also told me I was like on a contract with the army to be his caretaker. So he said that I couldn't like leave without it or so I could get in trouble. I have no idea like what really was true, but the minute I was super manipulated. So I don't know. I don't know. So he said, you have to stay here the whole time because they're paying you. And if you leave, you can get in trouble type of thing. So I don't know what was true and what wasn't. But um, so he was going through surgery, recovering and then, you know, apologizing for all this stuff. And I'm so sorry and this and that. So then that was really confusing, too. And then um, then surely but surely, like as he started getting like more strength again and when we're like getting close to be able to leave he just got super abusive and again. really angry yeah and really angry and i'm like stuck in this like hotel room and um like military hotel room like it like i was literally like secluded in this couldn't leave couldn't go anywhere didn't have a car and um you know and he told me you're not allowed to go around base because you're not military so mm -hmm. you can't do this you gotta stay here because there's a military police so i don't i didn't know what was true and what wasn't um and so um and then it got to a point where he just snapped in um again and um i and like just he had been like psychologically torturing me so bad like honestly like there i've had physical sexual and psychological abuse and to me the psychological abuse was the worst because it controls you so bad and like you know physical stuff like i felt like i can recover over a lot easier you know and all the other stuff but everything puts aside like that was the worst because it messed with you you don't know who you are you're just like lost and so um it got to a point where it got really bad and ugly and um he was throwing me against the wall and like and just abused me in every way you, you can imagine and um and then he decided and then he and then he left very angry and he and that he decided to take the dog to the vet at that time so he was leaving and he goes i'll be he goes he's and he, he's like you better be here when i get back and so i just sat there and I really felt like there was no way out. I said, I was like, there's no way out of this. I was at the point too, to where I never thought I would be able to recover. Like I was so scared. I didn't think that I could ever trust a person again. I didn't think that I could ever be loved again. I didn't know how to tell people what happened to me. Um, I honestly thought I had no future anymore. It broke me down in every way possible. So, um, and then, you know, with everything leading up to it, just the psychological thing, after I was just laying there, I just, I didn't want to live anymore. I just didn't want to live. And I sat there and I said, like, and I, I was just like, you know, because I've been depressed and had that, but like, but I literally in that moment did not want to live anymore. I was in shock for what just happened. And I was like, okay, like, do I really, do I really mean this that I don't want to live? And I try to think of a life, like, what could my life look like after this? And I didn't think that I could recover from it. I didn't, I, I was like, I was so just broken. And, um, you know, and you're also in a very, like, weird state of mind with when someone's just abused you too. So um, you're not thinking right. And so I thought my only way out was 
and away from him, I thought I didn't think that I could get away from him. And so I, the, I thought the only way out was to kill myself. And, um, and I, I think, you know, and I, I no longer was afraid because I had had thoughts about like throughout this whole process, like I don't want to live anymore. Like it'd just be easier if I died. But I was scared. I was scared to do anything. I was like scared for the first time. I was not scared anymore because I was so scared of my my reality that, you know, that dying seemed like I don't have to deal with it. The pain ends now. I didn't want to deal with any more pain. And I knew going forward I would have to deal with so much more pain because I was so messed up. So, um, so I, uh, so I took, so I tried to kill myself and, um, I, uh, you know, I, I, he had all these pills from his surgery. I took whatever they were and then I slipped my wrist and I was in the bathroom and, um, you know, and like to the state of mind I must have been because I love my dog. Like I would have never just like wanted to abandon my dog. So the state of mind I must have been in is like, like I feel really bad, you know, about that. And, um, you know, it's just, it's, Shoshana was there. Yeah, she was, she was in, yeah, she was, she was there. And, um, so, and I would never abandon her, you know? So, um, so it just, I think it was just like the moment yeah, of, you, you know, were, you weren't in the right place. Yeah. And, um, and then the next, and then he had happened to come back and I was in the bathroom and he can see the blood like it underneath, like that's how bad it was. The blood underneath the door going into the, like from the bathroom into the hotel room into like, you know, like the front um, door. And so, um, he broke the door down and, um, you know, and I remember him saying, I'm so sorry. No, like, please don't. Like, I remember him saying something, but I was like on my way out. I remember. And then I, um, he called uh, the ambulance. And then the next thing I remember was um, the ambulance seeing them in like my eyes and them saying, okay, her poop, her pupils are back and you know, we've got her. And um, apparently, so he stopped the bleeding um, from what I was told. And then when, by the time the ambulance came, um, uh, they were the ones. And so they're taking me to the hospital. And I remember I'm in the ambulance and I was like, I felt safe. Like I was away from him. I felt safe. And I was like, I don't want to die. Like I didn't, I didn't want that. Like, I remember being so happy I was alive, Yeah. like in that moment. And I felt like a relief being, um, in, away you know, so I, w I felt safe, you know, being in that, that ambulance with the paramedics and, you know, and they're just being super nice and like, you know, you know, like doing what they're supposed to do with someone in that situation, you know, but, you know, they obviously think you're an unstable person. So they're just doing what their, their protocol is. But I remember like, just literally like being, like being awake and being like, I, I don't want to die. I want to live. Like, I don't want to live. Like what just happened? Like I was, I didn't know what had just taken over me and happened. And, um, you know, and so I was relieved. I didn't realize what was about to happen, you know. So when that happens, they 5150 you. They take you to, like, the psych ward. And, like, they don't know what had just happened. They don't know what you had been through. They just think you're a crazy person that tried to kill yourself. So um, I got admitted into the, uh, the psych ward. And they, you know, they uh, – and I remember, too, like, the paramedic was being really happy. He's like, it's really nice. He was trying to make – because I was scared. He can tell I was scared. He's like, it's really nice, you know. I'm sure they'll give you a window or something. I remember saying to him, like, I just try to kill myself. I doubt they'll give me a window. Like, I just remember saying something like that, like, trying to, like, have a sense of humor. And, um, you know, and they put you in this and, and, and they put you on a bed, they tie you to it and all that. Like, and that alone was like really scary because I now am like back to being the person I am. So I'm like, I'm not crazy. Like, why am I tied to this bed? Like, like, no, I want to live. Like, and so that was really scary and traumatic. And then you're also, you hear the other people that are there. And you're like, I'm not crazy. <laughs> like, you know, but yeah, you're they, like, I'm not that crazy. I'm <laughs> you, a little crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You know, and like, you know, and every time someone walks in the room, they're like, are you going to hurt me? And I'm just like, no, I would never hurt someone. Like, yeah. you know, but that they don't know. They don't know you. How long were you there? Um, I, I wasn't there the full time that they're supposed to hold someone because once I had told them a little bit of what happened, what happened, they're like, you're not crazy. You're someone that was 
uh, yeah, Being abused. yeah. And so, um, they let me go. So, um, and my parents were called and they drove down there to pick me up. So they drove from California to Washington to pick me up. So as soon as they were notified, they picked me up. And, um, so I didn't have to be there very, and after like a few hours, they untied me and stuff like that. And, you know, at first they, they don't even let you go to the bathroom, but they, but after like, uh, they did like a psych test on me and like, were talking to me, they're like, okay, she, she was just someone that just went through all of these events for months and months and months and you broke. And so, um, so I was real, I would, I was re- released as soon as my, my, um, my, my parents were able to get there. Yeah. And that's um, when you came to California. Yeah. Came to California. Yeah. And that was, so going through that was traumatic too, because I was very sh- in shock about it. Like what had just happened. Um, you know, and like your parents there, they love you, but they, they, they don't, they don't know how to really talk to you and say something and, you know, and like, so you feel very alone too. Cause you, you know, and I was also very like, just confused to how that happened. I was, I was still like really hurt about what I had gone through. And like, the weird thing is, is I was, I was legitimately like still upset that like, like, like I asked him, like, did anyone call? And like, like that he didn't care. Like I never heard from him again. You know what I mean? And, um, I was still like, that's how messed up in the brain I was that I was like still hurt that he didn't care, you know, Mm -hmm. about that, which is like, sounds crazy, but I mean, I understand it now, like, you know, going through a process of healing and therapy and stuff. But, um, but the whole, but it's like, it's like everything that like the whole thing, like when I was there, it's like a scary movie, like something you'd see in a scary movie, Mm -hmm. you know, like, like, like not a scary movie, but like a a bad movie, you know? And, you know, cause I've watched those and and it's interesting. Like I've watched, I, I was obsessed with watching movies like that after that. And, um, because it was like my way of trying to cope and, um, like try to get out of it and try to like be better. But I was in, I was in shock from what just happened to me. And then of course, like, you know, like I'm going to a psychiatrist and all this and they're like, you know, I'm just being myself. So they're like, you're like, no, you're fine. You just went through a bad situation, but no one really like dug deeper into everything that I'd been through. So they're like, no, you're fine. You don't need any more therapy. Like you're fine, this and that. And, but I, I was like mentally, I was mentally messed up and I did need help, but I didn't want, but also too, like I was afraid to open up at that point and I would just ask, keep it to, yourself. Keep it to myself. And so they thought I looked normal to them because I can be very happy and look normal, but deep down inside I'm like dying, you know? Yeah, you're in pain. Yeah, and I learned to hide that for so long. And so I came back to uh, California. I was in Monterey for a little bit, but my parents were just in the process of moving back to Chicago because my grandmother has Alzheimer's. So um, they were going to be leaving. So that's when I decided to move because I hadn't been, lived in Sacramento since um, I left because I was living in L.A. in Southern California. So um, I uh, decided to move back to Sacramento because my brother was here. And, um, I kind of had known people like when I had worked before and I was like, well, I used to assist hair, in doing hair and like, I can do get, I knew con- I had connections with people to do hair. So I was like, okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to get a job. I'm going to do hair. So, um, I went to go live cause I still had to like live with someone like supervised just to make sure I was okay and check when. Um, check with. So I lived with, uh, my best friend from high school, her parents, because yeah. it was really close with them growing up. And then her brother, CJ lived there, who was is the going one to, who, who was, go, who goes to your, who was yeah. going to your gym at the yeah. time. And he was the one who got her to come here. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> so, um, so, and then, so I was, so I, I think it was about a month I was back before I, I came here. Yeah. I think it was about a month. And, um, that whole month I was, I was, I was messed up and I was just trying to like day by day. Like I I remember I'd go to the grocery store and I'd look at people smiling and having normal conversations, buying groceries. And I, I just would look at them and be like, how, like they're just living this normal life. And like, I was just like, kind of like in a, I was numb. I was very numb. And, um, so I just did whatever I did to distract my dog. Like, that's why my bond with my dog is huge. She, she was like, I couldn't go anywhere without her. Cause I had such bad 
um, anxiety and PTSD and all this stuff that I couldn't go anywhere without her. So I brought her everywhere with me. Wow. And so that's why like, I am obsessed with my dog because she is the main reason that kept me like going, you know, she was, she always gave me love and it was just, we had this such close bond, you know? Yeah, when she first came, she's always been your dog. I uh-huh. you yeah, I was I was literally here. afraid to go anywhere without her too. Yeah, I was so just scared and and just like um, I was numb. I was like kind of like in a dream for a long time. Yeah, for a long time. So like I so then. Um, so I was, you know, I was trying to work. Um, I didn't want to do hair on my own. I didn't have confidence. So I decided to assist again um, underneath a woman that I assist for a long time. I knew her. She felt safe to me. Um, I, I didn't want to, I, I didn't have confidence to do hair. I didn't want to talk to people. I, d- I just wanted to work and not have to talk to people and do so stuff. So you were broken. I was broken on every way possible. And this was about a month before you ran out of gas and you called me. Mm-hmm. Now it makes sense why she called me. See this? She because had... I didn't really have any. Like, I had my brother here, but my I, my brother didn't know what happened to me. Hmm. Um, I didn't tell him. I didn't want anyone to really know. My parents knew, but they didn't really want anyone to know. Um, and um, and I don't even know if, like, a lot of people in my family f- fully know. But, um, you know, I just wanted to feel normal, and I didn't yeah. want to think about it. I was trying to move on. Yep. So now, now that she broke our hearts, and we're all sad. Listen to this. We're going to switch gears and bring the happy part of this out of this. Yeah. So see this right here. The reason why I thought it was important for you to share that. And I'm thankful. And I'll, I want to say thank you for you for sharing your private. I mean, your personal life with us. But all this is really what makes Amy who she is. Mm-hmm. Like that right there is why she has this heart that is unbreakable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you've been through hell and back. And nothing can stop you. No. And by the way, you're the only girl that I have on here. I mean, the only person I've had on two episodes. I, and this is why. Because you're amazing, Amy. And I wanted to wear your shirt because the reason why I wanted to wear your shirt today, I've had so many people this week ask about your shirt more than even before. Really? Yeah, and I wanted to tell you that on here. Aww. And I knew this would remind me. And um, and the reason why I feel like that happened, obviously, is because you're such a role model to so many people. Mm-hmm. Not even girls. To everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, men, boys, coaches, everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, even myself. You're inspiring to me just seeing your work ethic, uh, seeing how you work hard is makes me even step it up even more it's like yo look how she's busting her ass and it's contagious to everybody Mm -hmm. so thank you for that and also how good does it feel to know that like your shirt before was nice but now that you see everything that amy put into it all the work everything she does this nice shirt becomes even nicer i feel like it does it has so much more value now because yeah Amy brought all this extra value to it as it was before it had, but not mm-hmm. as much. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's something that symbolized that shirt I wanted to tell you about is it, I learned through boxing that I had to, cause like when I first got on the boxing world, I was a little, I was insecure. I'm like, okay, I'm really girly. Like, mm-hmm. like I was still trying to find my place in this world, you know? And I cared too much about what anyone thought, like obviously yeah. at that time, I, w- I just wanted acceptance so bad. And it was just a, a broken person trying to move on. And, um, I was really insecure about who I was, I, you know, cause I, I, I don't look like the typical fighter. People were like, really you, you fight, you know, like kind of laugh at me, make fun of me. And I remember when, you know, and I would always wear cat ears because I love yeah. them. They're sparkly and they made me happy. Everything got glitter. Yeah, and it makes me happy. <laughs> Maybe I should tell them the glitter story. <laughs> you should. <laughs> so I trained this girl, right? <laughs> and my wife is, you know, my wife's a little like overprotective, a little jealous with me. <laughs> and I always show up to the house with hella glitter on me for months. It was a year, actually. Yeah. So it wasn't a one-time thing. Like, I would show up all the time with glitter. And And you didn't know. And she would always get mad at me. She's like, sure, you don't know where you got glitter from. She was like, where does all this glitter come from? I'm like, I don't know. I was at the gym. I don't know. That's all I was. She's like, (laughs) yeah, sure you were. I'm like, I don't know where I got glitter from. (laughs) Fuck. 
<laughs> and she's over here accusing me of shit. One day, a fucking year later, I'm training Amy, and I look in her bag, and her lotion is fucking glitter. <laughs> is your lotion, huh? No, you were hitting mitts with me, and as I hit the mitt, you could literally see the glitter fall off of, and it went on to you, and you go, don't get that glitter on me, because Ollie is going to get mad at me, and then you go, wait a minute, it's you! <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it was your ass this whole time. Her <laughs> ass was getting me in trouble for like a solid year of me, the suspicion of <laughs> glitter. She's like, you always have glitter on you. It was her. Yeah, so then I sent a picture of all my glitter to Ollie that night. I'm like, it's me. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then she goes, don't cover for me, Amelia. Yeah, she's like, you're covering for him. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, keep going. You, you always... So, you know, and so like, you know, and like you had told me too, like, you know, if when you walk into that ring and if you're not confident in who you are mm. and know who you are, you have no business being in there, mm. you know, and I was I was still trying to become I was tr trying to find out who Amy is and like, you know, have confidence for myself and build that confidence. And so, um, you know, and so it meant a lot to me, like like, you know, the shirt is a representation of what I look like, like, you know, the pigtails, the blonde hair, the cat ears. And so when, when that shirt was made, it was a representation and all these people wearing it proud. And it was like, it meant so much to me that like, I was now accepted for who I was because yeah. up until that point, I try to mold into being like what I thought people wanted me to be, yeah. to, to be liked, loved whatever you know so this shirt is amy 100 percent. yeah and so and then when i go to my first fight and everyone my friends decided because my friends would always like laugh and say we would never be caught wearing cat ears right and so they were all wearing cat ears at my fight and there's like a hundred people wearing cat ears and yeah, even guys yeah even, even guys you yeah. even had guys wearing cat yeah ears. Yeah. <laughs> and another funny story is that was when David fought and yeah. a lot of people thought they're like why does David want us wearing cat ears yeah yeah <laughs> so David always makes fun of me like that yeah, like, for man, that you got you got us all wearing because his ears. fans were you know everyone because everyone was there for from both the of gym, us yeah. yeah and so and some of the people didn't know who I was yet so they're like why are we doing this we'll do it yeah. so that shows how much people love them they were cat ears for you too David <laughs> yeah and it was your first fight right it was my first fight. first fight yeah and so it just it meant a lot to me, like having like <laughs> grown men wear this like girly looking shirt of myself, like cartoon mm -hmm. version of myself. It made me like feel like I was accepted and, you know, for, for being who I was. So what changed? Because you were here. It, it took you how long until you competed? I remember you were here for a couple years before you had your first fight. Yeah, I would say. Because you started fighting two years ago. You've been here about four years, right? Yeah, so it took about two years. So yeah. it took you two it's, years. Yeah, so... So tell me about your process. So How, when what, I first, what happened through those two years? Well, when I first fight? came here, I came here as my therapy. Like, I came here as um, my outlet. I worked out hard. I, it was the only time in the world where everything in my life disappeared. Like, yeah. e And even, like, it was an escape from my physical pain, too, that I was dealing with. And, um, and so I would be here, I'd be focused. And then by the time I'd go home, I go back to being depressed and what the heck is going on in my life thinking about like, how do I become, you know, how, how do I heal from this? You know? Yeah. So, um, uh, my obsession with boxing, it, it, it didn't, it, it wasn't just a sport to me. It, it seemed like a necessity. Like it, it seemed like a necessity to live and to survive. It was like my survival from what I had been through. And mm. I, and I based like those, those small hours that I was here where no one knew what was going through me feeling normal and you know just being a normal person was what kept me going every day and i just would look forward to the next day the next day you know and just think about what i was doing and when i came here i didn't want to compete i remember telling you yeah you know and like i um i was training with uh, it was evan who wanted to compete and so like I, you know, so like all the girls that wanted to compete, I trained with them. I like to train with them, but honestly, so I've always wanted to compete on a, like when I was like, you know, cause I saw my brother competing deep down inside. I did want to compete, but I didn't think I had it in me to do it. Cause I, I thought my health would stop me and I, and I didn't think I would, and I wasn't confident enough in myself mm -hmm. to, to do it. So yeah, there was a dream inside me that wanted to. So, and I'd always tell myself like, in another life, because I always knew that I would be capable of doing it, 
but I it was like in another life if I didn't have these medical issues and if so I you, wasn't so broken. You gave yourself a lot of uh, excuses of why you couldn't do it. Yeah. You were like, oh, I have this, I have this, so I'll do it in another life. Or I can't well, do it. Well, and, and I said, I wish that I you didn't, didn't have, have this. You didn't I have wish this. that I didn't have medical issues because if I didn't have the medical issue, like I was like, maybe I can get over the mental stuff, mm -hmm. but definitely not the medical, the, the medical issues. There, I didn't think that I could because yeah, every you, time. I definitely, you had a lot of shit going on. Yeah, like, I mean, the asthma, the anxiety, the panic attacks. I mean, I had everything possibly that can stop me everything you know like was against me this is why know? to me it makes me so proud to say when i talk about you is like yo do you guys not know what amy lived through like i'm like maybe most they people don't know, don't know. Yeah, and this is why like know. in my head i i i i try to explain it i'm like you know what the best way to explain it is with the fucking podcast because yeah. there's so much shit that you had to overcome because people feel like, oh, she was talented. She won the Nationals. Uh, she was just a talented girl. You just got it because you're talented. No, she worked her ass off for this. Like, yeah. literally, you worked your ass off. You had to overcome shit Everything. after shit after shit. It, nothing was handed to you. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Nothing at all. You went from health issues to personal psychology. Like, you had every fucking... Mm -hmm hill and roadblock in the way and you keep knocking one down after another after another nothing was handed to you well now looking back and thinking about all those things i'm like man that was a lot of roadblocks that i went through yeah it's very overwhelming now that i think about it like now that you're making me think about it yeah like, but <laughs> like you you went through some shit yeah so it was a lot it was a lot yeah so when people were like oh yeah she was just talented of course she got it no she worked her ass off like i had my cousin come here from Oregon, remember I told yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. And first thing he says, like, yo, that girl works hard. Like, yeah. she works amazingly hard. Like, her conditioning is a whole nother level. Cause, and I'm like, it's like that because she works hard. Like, she don't play with her shit. Like, she, I'm like, I could be there or I could not be there. She will work the same intensity regardless if I'm standing next to her mm -hmm. or if I'm not standing next to her. And that stuff, I can't teach. Like, yeah. you either want to work hard or you don't. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, that, and I think that's the biggest thing with you is that you work yeah. super, super fucking hard. Yeah. And you're super coachable, obviously. Super yeah. coachable. Um, so you start fighting. Um, you know what? Uh, one thing I wanted to bring up, the very first episode mm -hmm. that we did last time, you said, I don't know if you remember, but you had a goal. Do you remember what your goal was in that episode? I can, I can tell you if you don't remember, but I'm going to see if you remember. I'll give you a second to think. Do you remember what your goal was? Did you have the warrior program then? Yeah. Was it the 10 fights? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, see, you do remember. Yeah, it would have been the 10 fights then. Yep. So you you had just had your first fight. Yeah, and I remember. I'm like, okay, I want to fight again. You're like, really? Yeah. That wasn't like your bucket list goal? Yeah, so you, <laughs> you had just fought. That was your, uh, you had just fought. I think, no, it, you it, had it, five it, fights already. Hmm? You had five fights. Five fights when? Uh, during the last podcast. Five? Yep, you had five. Yes. Oh, we did it late. Oh, yeah, we did yeah. do after my first fight. So we did yeah. it. We did it right. You were already a year in. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we did it. So when I was at my five. Yeah. So you had five fights, and your goal was to have five more. Yep. And you said this is exactly what you said. You said I want to have ten fights, and I want to move up to the next level before anybody else. Mm -hmm. so I don't want to just be the first one to do it female wise. First. I want to be the first in general to do it. I yeah. want to beat the boys and the girls. And which and, is hard to do. And you said it's hard to do because the boys get fights easier. Yeah. And guess what, Amy? I did it. <laughs> you did it. But don't celebrate yet because you still got a couple other things to do. But you did I, do it. You got your 10 <laughs> fights before the boys. Yeah, no, I got to do the test. But she did. She beat the boys to it. So you did exactly what you said you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. You beat the boys. Mm -hmm. um, so that says a lot about you right there. And that's and always your been mentality me. too. That's I always mean, been me. Anything I've set my mind to, I, I Yeah, I and go you were over, like, you I, were very eager to it. Like you were, we have kids here boys girls everybody that are just coasting through it mm -hmm. and and there's i have guys that are here that have all the talent and skill that should be doing it but they don't have that demeanor they don't want it as bad as you like you said earlier it was a necessity for me it wasn't mm -hmm. a hobby i needed it to live that type of mentality they didn't have it they don't mm -hmm. have it that's why you beat them to it 
Yeah. Um, so congratulations. I wanted to tell you that. Thank you. So now let's start talking about the Nationals. Yeah. Down, you ready? Oh, yeah. I want to uh, talk about each and every single fight. Let's go step by step. But before that, let's talk about the training to Nationals. What, what was that like? Tell, tell us. Well, because it's, talk it's, about it's the year of 2020, too. So yeah, so give, give us a whole not, lowdown. Go. It's not give, normal. Give us everything. Go from the postpone, how it broke your heart. Well, okay. I, so, I, I think they need to hear it from you, not from me. Go ahead. So the first thing was, like, uh, I want to do Golden Gloves. Mm-hmm. And to me, I thought that was, that was going to be the biggest thing that I was going to do. That's, mm-hmm. that's what at the time I thought it was, you know. And um, so we trained really hard for that. It was going to be my first tournament. I was super excited. This was uh, March of 2020. It was March ago. 13th. It was supposed to be on March 13th in the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. And um, so we trained our butt off for that. And, um, uh, you know, and then the world was starting. Everything. COVID happened. COVID happened. And I remember... Like, okay, like, it seemed like they were still going to have it. You know what I mean? And March 10th, on my birthday, I got a call from you and said they canceled the fights, like, at 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I was so sad. Because, like, like, you know, I didn't do anything for my birthday. Didn't eat anything because I was, you know, making sure my weight was good. And I was okay with that because I love fighting so much that that sacrifice is okay. So me not doing anything for my birthday, I didn't care. I'm like, I get to go fight. So any sacrifice that I, you know, that I have made for like my birthday or like doing that is just like, I just wanted to fight. And so that I was just like, wow. And like, I'd worked so hard for that. So I was like super bummed, like super bummed, you know? And I didn't know like if that was like, I felt like that was going to be like my last chance. I didn't know like how my age played into like things. I didn't, I I didn't, I didn't understand how it worked yet at the time. So I was just super bummed. I think it's just the hard work too and everything. And then, um, so there was definitely like a, just like, ah, you know, it just, uh, it brings you down a little bit when you're just like, I was at my peak. I was ready to go. I remember I was heartbroken having to tell you. I was like, fuck, I got to tell me this shit. <laughs> and on my birthday. And I know. I didn't want to tell you, but I'm like, fuck, I have to tell her. It's not my fault. But so then you didn't get to do it. And what happened? I didn't do it. And so I was a little like discouraged for a little bit. I would say about good, good two weeks, you know, um, and then, um, and then, and then that's when COVID hit really bad. So then like everything shut down, like at the time I was doing hair, like our jobs and gyms and everything. And so, um, you know, and so then that's when, and then shortly, like all the gyms, you know, in Sacramento, like on and every, all the gyms had to be closed. And so that's when, what are you going to say? I was going to say, what you did right there, you started training online, remember? you? Yeah, you so that's, what, that's what I was going to go. So You started training online and worked on Southpaw. So, yeah, so so we're, we're at home. We're in, you know, or we're, we're at home and, like, and it's different training at home than the gym and, you know, and around that environment and that. Because also, too, the gym, I was able to mentally escape and it was, like, what I'd known. And so I had to find a way how to get into that zone, like, at my house, you know, and, um, you know, and, and just, like, with everything. And, too, and so... Um, we started online training. I didn't want to do online training. Uh, so, you know, I did it because like anything that you've asked me to do as a coach, I've done and I respect, so I'll do it. And I did it. You asked me to do it. So I did it. And I, but it sounded, it sounded like, I was like, man, like I love boxing. Like really, I don't want to, like, I'm thinking about like, like, like an online, like bow tie class. That's what it made me feel like, you know what I mean? Like, Like, what Shit, the heck? feel that way, too. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> That's and, why I didn't want to do it you at know, the beginning. And so, I mean, I, of course, did it because, for one, like, for our team and to be together. And it was really cool because, you know, all of our coaches were on there. You had all of our coaches. You know, and then remember the online crew was badass. We had, like, Levi was on it, too. Uh, everybody, we were all training online. It was pretty, actually, Angel was on it. Yeah, it yeah, and you, and you would try to get the ones that, like, wa- wanted to compete, like, at, at the, the, th- the 3 p.m. one. Remember? The 3 o'clock one. Mm-hmm. And, and so, 
I, um, you know. It was actually really fun. I remember those classes. They were pretty fucking badass. Well, and it was also fun for you because I was on mute the whole time. Yeah, it was the best thing because so, I'm like, I couldn't Amy talk. was on mute. It was like the best thing. How am I? How do I get to train Amy if she's I, on mute? And it the funny the thing is, is I thought you world. guys put me on mute, but apparently I put myself on mute. That See what I mean? <laughs> totally Amy again. <laughs> <laughs> I put myself on mute. So you're training online. And at this time, this is important because at this time, when when they're when they were online, I was like, how can I make this beneficial for them that they actually gain something from this? Yeah. And I made you guys all start training southpaw, which is the opposite stance. Those that mm. don't know what we're talking about, boxing wise. Which it made it it made it more fun and more like okay, like I'm gonna work on this. I mean, of course, you can always work on your technique and stuff like that. But in that situation, you're just bummed about life and everything shut down, your gym and everything, your routine and not fighting. So like that was like okay like that that's a challenge it's a little bit more of a challenge and it, it made it more fun because yep. it made it not just so like what i normally do but now i'm doing it at home yep and so we started fun. doing that and then uh but and then so i remember too so i remember you know so i did online training and i still sent you my two miles mm -hmm. every day and um and I remember there was a point where now we're going months into COVID, our gym's still closed, and I'm doing online training. And it's really, really hard to find that motivation, especially for me, because, like, like when I train, it's very painful for me. Like, it, it always is, like, because of my health issues. I, I deal with physical pain. Like, I, I will train my butt off, but I will be down. Like, on the weekends, like, I'm recovering. Like, like it's so... Training for as boxing is a hard sport, but for me, it's 10 times harder because of the physical pain that I have to push through. Like I feel pain when I'm doing the I have physical things that happen to my body while I'm running and stuff. So it's hard for me to find that motivation because I'm in pain and, and then working out is hard. It's just, it's, it's hard yeah. as a boxer. So I remember like I was on these runs and I remember just on these runs every day, kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. And I remember at one point I, I just told myself, I'm like, I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know what is in my future, but like, I, you know, I, 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 I'm a person of faith and I know God has a plan for me, has always had a plan for me. So I said, I know that there's a plan for me and I know it's going to pay off one day. I know it's going to pay off one day. And I remember thinking, I'm like, there's probably so many other boxers out there not doing this. And it made me feel good knowing that there is, there's probably a lot of boxers not doing this. So I did not skip a heartbeat. I continued to, um, eat like my prep meals. Um, I, you know, of course I took a, of course I ate things that I wanted to eat and, you know, relax from the diet a little bit, you know, cause I had been going hardcore for two years eating really healthy. But, um, I, I remember saying that to myself, I don't, I don't know how or know why, but I know it's going to pay off. And I had faith in that. Yeah. I didn't know it was nationals. But I, I knew it was going to pay off. And that gave me motivation, knowing that other people most likely were not. And it was true. It was true. A lot of people were not. A lot of people weren't. You know, and, and also I needed it mentally. Like, I, I needed that. That was, like, the highlight of my day to work out. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, it's my outlet. So, I love boxing. I can't. I, I don't know who. <laughs> I don't know if I know who I am without it. Yep. So, then the gym opens back up. Yeah. And they scheduled nationals for December of 2020. Yeah. And I found, Louisiana. so I found out I can be in that. So I was like, so I was just like, okay, things happen for a reason. Like this is better than golden gloves. Like, okay, nationals. And I was just like pumped. Like I was, you know, um, ready to go. I, I want to step back though. Um, so like during the time of being like, uh, COVID being home and not being having a busy chaotic life. That's when I realized that I still had not healed from my past. So that's when I started and I started getting nightmares. I couldn't, I, I was getting nightmares of everything that happening. I was, I didn't want to go to sleep. I was um, having really bad PTSD symptoms. And so, um, that's when I started going to a trauma therapist during that time. So I was working online and then I was going to tr trauma therapy and for that whole year of, of 2020, like, you know, and, um, so I now like a whole year of therapy and that changed my life. That changed everything because now like I wasn't, I wasn't suppressing it. I was dealing with it. I was, 
And then I learned so much, like, okay, that's why I'm the way I am. And, you know, I I learned to heal on a whole new level. And that changed my mental strength for sure again, too. So coming back to the gym now, I am now, like, a way more stable. Like, I'm not just, like, suppressing all this stuff. I'm now, like, I, I'm, I, I'm conquering it and using it as my strength, no. you know. Um, and so <clears throat> we get back to the gym. We're training for – uh the first time nationals yeah in yeah. december because it yeah. got postponed yes that's why it says 2020 people are like why does it say 2020 and it's 2021 because this, this is the 2020 nationals that was just postponed i tell people i bought on ebay yeah <laughs> <laughs> i bought on ebay and i fucked up the 2020 was on discount cause, you know 21 <laughs> <laughs> so uh you're training for december and it got canceled two so, weeks before remember yeah and I was like, oh, man, again, you know, yeah. and, you know, and, and for this, I trained even harder than yep. I, we were going hard. I remember. Or, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're going to we're going to the Bay Area. We're going we're doing everything we possibly can and navigating through COVID, trying to do things how we can do it, you know. And uh, that broke my heart. That broke my heart. I was like, again, he just yeah, it broke my heart. <laughs> I told you, I, I remember telling you, I'm like. You're like, you're like, do you want to, you know, like I said, boxing is broken my heart right now. <laughs> and, um, you know, like just, you know, I, this belt made you work for it. Like <laughs> it went above and beyond. It broke your heart multiple times. Yeah. So what did you do to stay motivated after it got postponed? What did you do? I remember you went to Hawaii. I do remember that. I didn't go to Hawaii. Yeah, you did. You no. took like days off. I didn't go to Hawaii. Because you, you didn't do? go to Hawaii during 2020. No, it was December. I did not go to Hawaii. You did something with Jason. I don't know, but it wasn't Hawaii. Because uh -huh. you can't go to, you couldn't go to Hawaii. There would be I remember or something. You wanted to go to Hawaii or something happened. But I remember you did something. I don't remember so what you did. So I took, I remember, I took like, I took like a little time off because I told you boxing broke my heart. I remember I said, if boxing broke my heart, I don't want to be around it right now. I, but it'll be okay. I'm going to love it again. I just need to mourn this right now. <laughs> you know, I just said, I just need to deal with it, but I'm yeah. going to love it again. I'll get back to it. You know, and that's what I did. I just needed to deal with my emotions and I said, I'll get back to it. So I think I took like a week or two off. You, mm -hmm. you said, you told me like however long I want to take off. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, so I took a little bit of time off, you know, let my body recover because like I, I was like feeling good. Like, like the day that it got canceled, I was right at my weight. I remember I, that day I was like, I feel really good. I'm confident. I'm excited. Like I was like at my peak, like I was like ready to go. And then I was like, Oh no. So, um, yeah. So I just took that little time to recover my body and like regroup my brain again and just be like, all right, well, it was actually training. a huge blessing though. Yeah. Because we got more time trained mm -hmm. and in December, I, Levi couldn't go. Yeah. So and, that was really cool. And in uh, April, he was able to go. Yeah. So, so it was a blessing. And I'm, I'm really glad because even like with Levi being part of the team and training up to that and they're like, honestly, that that second training, I just. I took things to another level and I, I learned a lot of new things. Some mm -hmm. of my favorite things and how I do. So it just, you know, yeah. the, everything happens for a reason. And I've always, and I've always trusted that. So like, even though I get upset about things, you know, but I've learned to have a strong mindset with things like, okay, things let you down, deal with those emotions, get back to it, you know? And that's how I, I've been like throughout with everything. Like, okay, you know, like that, you know, I, I wasn't going to let me stop me cause I had come so far. So um, you know, so I took that a little bit timed off and then I trained and we didn't know when it was going to happen again, when nationals was going to happen, but just kept training. And, um, and then it was nice cause then, um, and then when Levi came back, it was really cool to have a teammate that was going to, you know, cause we were there for each other, just kind of like training together. So yeah. that was really cool too. And, um, so. All right. Uh, what did you gain so much throughout the time? You said you learned a lot during those times what did you learn i learned how to put pressure and 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 for not because i'm a pressure fighter i like to put pressure and everyone loves running away from me and i learned how to make it it changed the game i learned how to make it easy mm -hmm. with not letting them get away from me yeah and it made it fun it changed it, it changed the game for me it really changed everything for me because before people were always running away from me so i felt like i was always having to chase them yeah 
And then we learned something that it was changing and I learned on how to stay on them and I loved it. <laughs> it's and, like my favorite thing and, to do. Yeah. And that's what really made it even go above and beyond. For yeah. You, huh? Yeah. And then like with the, with me being able to switch into Southpaw and everything like that, like, like. And I, these are all things that happen off a of bad thing. Southpaw, you mm-hmm. got it with COVID as training online. Mm-hmm. The second thing happened with uh, nationals being postponed. Yeah. So all these things that were super great for you were born from a bad situation. Situation. Yeah. And, and it was it a good. really, really bad situation too. Something that broke your heart. Yeah. But something so good came out of that. Yeah. That right there is badass. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So then we get to nationals. Yeah. And uh, we're there. And I saw who you were fighting. I saw the side you were on. <laughs> I didn't tell you shit. Of course, but I never wanted to know. It's always worked. All right, so I have actually a question for you. Because, like, I've always trusted, you know, I never cared who I spar or whatever. We've always done the system, and it works. And so, like, you know, I don't ask questions. Just when, mm. where, I'll be there, you know? So, I want to know you're, like, now I know who I fought and the bracket I was in after the fact. But So, when you first saw the bracket, uh, what was your thoughts? What was my thoughts? Uh-huh. I knew you were gonna win. I know. I know, but like, like, like seeing it. My thought. You don't want to know my my honest my honest honest opinion. Yeah. I was worried that you were gonna find out and it was gonna fuck with you. Mm. I was worried that Jason or Melanie or one of them were gonna tell you, "Oh, you're fighting so and so." Yeah. And that was gonna fuck with you. So that's what I was worried about. So but I made. Was I worried about you competing in them? No, because if I was worried about you competing against good people. You wouldn't I wouldn't have took you. You wouldn't have took me. Yeah, yeah. Why would I take you? I, if I'm going to worry about my boxer competing against X amount of people, then my boxer should not be competing. Because why am I worried? Yeah. I should be 100% confident in you guys. And that's what I told. How many times did I tell you and Levi that? Yeah. I told you guys. Exactly. If exactly. I didn't believe in you guys. I would have took 12 days off to spend with my wife in Hawaii or something. Yeah. Not 12 days off to be in Louisiana to see you guys get your ass kicked. Yeah, no, exactly, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, exactly. So, and yeah. well, and but no, but anyone that knows me, so, like, they know what I do. So, anytime I, if I did talk to anyone, I'd be like, hey, I don't want to know anything. Don't tell me anything. Like, but it also, like, I, I also wasn't really talking to anyone. I did talk to Melanie a lot on the phone, but, like, she knew. I was like, just so you know, do not tell me anything. No hints, no nothing. I want nothing to know. Mm-hmm. So, because it's just a big part of it. Like, I don't I don't care. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, you just have to be in that mindset and knowing what you're bringing and not not care who you're against. So, yeah, so people may I protect wonder. it. No, I protect it. I protect it really good. So I don't let anyone ever That's tell good. me. Yeah, I protect it. You have to be that way. I think, look, there's a difference. So people may be like, well, you should study so-and-so because there's a difference in the two. Like in the pros, yes, you should study. Yeah. Yes, you should this because you're fight. It's a different style. Like mm-hmm. in the pros, you have time to set up things. You're fighting a lot longer. Mm-hmm. You have 12 rounds. You got. It's way different than the amateurs. Amateurs, you got three rounds. It's super fast paced. If you get there to sit there and think about what you got to do and all this, by the time you fucking thought about what you got to do, the fight's over. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? On top of that, it psychs you out. When you know that you're fighting somebody that's ranked or they won this or they did this, you You're thinking about them. what they've done. Yeah. You don't think about what you can do. Yeah. You're you know thinking I mean? about and that. And it doesn't matter. Another thing, I go on and on and on about this thing. Yeah. Another thing that it is really big on it is that you have to prepare yourself for everything in amateurs. Yeah. Like, Cause I may not fight you. I may fight this person. And what happens if I plan to fight you and then last minute I fight this person? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? It so what? Say, say, you got to be ready. You got to be ready for a tall person, a short person. You have to be ready. And that's what this is important. So when people get caught up in, Oh, I'm going to fight this dude. and I'm going to do that. How many people do we see all the time that studied everybody well, it was and crazy it does not matter. when I was there, everyone's like, who are you fighting? I'm like, I don't know. They're like, really? You don't know? I'm like, my coach knows. They're like, well, how, how do you know what to do? I'm like, hey, like, I, I, I show up to do what, I, what I've been trained to do. He's my coach. He knows who they are. He's going to tell me how to fight, and I'm going to do it. That's what I do. Like, exactly. And a lot of people don't understand it, and they think it's crazy. But when I went there, I never realized how much, like, everybody was, like, super into, like, 
oh, I'm finding this person. I'm finding the number one seed or this or that or whatever. And, like, I was just chilling. I was like, I don't know. It puts stress on you. Yeah. I, yeah. When you know you're fighting the number one seed, now you're like, oh, fuck, I'm fighting the number one seed. Yeah. Like, and when you don't like, know shit, you're yeah. like, I'm and, fighting, like, and, like, trust you as a coach, like, let, let, let you know, and you're going to prepare me. Yeah, and that's it, it. And it's always worked. And if you trust your coach, you don't need to know. No. Because your coach is the one who's going to handle that whole situation. Yeah. Your coach is the one who's going to put you in a good place. You don't have to worry about oh this and that fuck that yeah a lot of people don't understand it but it, yeah but i i love it i love it we've done yeah. that since and day pe- one and people have a hard time like i've had people where i train that don't they believe have a hard in time. that yeah and don't believe in why i should do that and then you then it's not going to work as a relationship because that's the way i treat my amateurs my yeah. pros like i said my pros are different amateurs i think that's the best way yeah and i love i love it i love yeah. that it's that way yep um so now that we go on your first fight you didn't know this, but you fought a girl number three, uh-huh. ranked number three, super talented girl. Yeah. Um, tell us about that fight. Um. Yeah. So I, you know, so going in, you know, we've incorporated like, you know, our meditation, manifesting, what's going to happen, and mm-hmm. stuff, and that's been huge. That's yeah. been huge. And so tell people about that. What is that? Because people don't know what we do. Okay. So, so you, you you get to fill them in, Amy. Tell tell. Okay. So tell them this thing that we do. So the night before the fight, and it, you know, and it was super helpful because I'm at nationals. I've never experienced nationals before. So I don't know what it's like. I don't know what it's like at the weigh-ins. I don't know what it's like in anything, you know, it's just very unknown, you know? And, um, so we do meditation to where you're leading the meditation and we're like literally manifesting what's going to happen and believe, you know, like putting it out there to like, okay, this is what's going to happen and how you're going to be prepared. And it mentally prepares you. Like it really mentally prepares you instead of just going in there in this unknown situation. And so, you know, you would, you know, so like with your breath work and just getting into that blank space, you know, and you would have me think about like, okay, like, you know, I would remind her of every Everything she, everything she explained in this podcast about what she went through, yeah. I would always remind her about You'd it. remind me of, you know, who I am, where I've come from, everything, how hard I've worked, you know, and because um, sometimes like if, if you're nervous about something, you can forget about that stuff. So it's, yeah. you're reminding me of like, like, you know, my heart of why my heart is in this and why my mind is in this. You know, and, um, you know, and I'm really feeling it. I'm really feeling the emotions of that, you know, and then going into, okay, you're going to wake up, your weight's going to be on point, you know, and, and just putting that, that that's like taking stress out. Cause sometimes people worry about weight, you mm. know what I mean? And that, you know, you're going to be, and then you're going to go to the, the weigh-ins and you're probably going to see people that you might fight and this and that, and you're going to, you know, you, it just mentally prepared me for the whole situation because normally you have your coach with you to do something, you know, and like I, I'm there going on my own, you know, and going through something I haven't been through before and just going through it. And so it mentally prepared me for checking in and doing this. And then you're like, and you know, and we talked about how, okay, and then you're going to eat, you're going to rest and then it's going to be go time. And, you know, and then we went, you, you would go, like round by round of like how the fight was gonna go how the fight was gonna go and i literally tell me like and and the thing is is like the, this like, is so the first Listen thing so the first thing like after like I, like okay like everything happened that we talked about like everything like step by step. step by step it was crazy like round by round by round punches even things i told you you were gonna land and then and then you said and then when, and then you said and then when they raise your hand you're gonna get emotional and you're and like and that was the only fight where i got like that emotional where i was like crying like a baby mm-hmm. like and it was just like it was just so crazy because and I, I i remember saying to you like one of the first things i said afterwards i was like like we just said that that was going to happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that was the first thing and it was crazy, but it's so important because it, it, it mentally prepares you. Mm-hmm. And I think for, and so, and so I remember, so I, you know, it, this is my first fight at nationals, you know, um, I know I'm the underdog. I know, I know all this and I, but I'm confident and I'm excited for it. And, you know, and then also too, you know, before I fight, I, I, I sit there and I meditate and it's something that I've never done before in fights until this time and um you know when you're waiting instead of being around all the chaos and all the boxers and looking at what this person's doing or that person's doing I would sit there and I would get into my own self and be calm 
And I, you know, and I think that helps with the nerves. You, you're not tearing yourself out from the nerves and mm. you just get into this game zone. zone. They like it's on zone. And I was like, so in that zone that it didn't matter what was like, I was laser focused, like I, everything going around me. I, I had no idea what was going around me. I didn't care. No. Um, you know, I probably looked like, you know, people are like, oh, this girl from California is sitting there meditating. You know what I mean? But like, hey, <laughs> it worked, it worked. But it, it just put me and I remember like when we're warming up like i because like i know how i felt before fights before and this is a big deal this is nationals you know big stage big stage my first fight and i remember i, I looked over at you and i'm like i'm in a really good place mentally right now mm -hmm. like I, I i'm in a very i remember saying that to you yep. you know and i felt very just because because i knew that i had done everything physically possible to be prepared mentally and physically, I did everything. I didn't take any shortcuts. So, like, with the training, like, I did everything asked of me, and I pushed myself. I, I pushed my limits. Like, you know, I've always told myself, like, if you're running and you get tired for a second you want to slow down, I remind myself, like, no, you're not slowing down because you don't want to think about that moment when you're there that you could have pushed harder. Yep. And so I – because. That, that could put doubt in your head. You know what put I mean? Down in your so head. like I was one like somebody I know. So I was one hundred percent confident in my training and everything that I put into it because I knew I did everything possible. So all the work was done. And when you go up, when you're there, it's just now just mentally preparing yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's what the meditation and all that, you know. And so uh, going to the first fight, you know, and, uh, you know, so right before I see who I'm, I'm going to fight, you know. And I mean, I didn't know, like, who she was or whatever. She's very tall. You know, she's 5'11". So that I was like... I was, um, you know, so I was like, okay, like, you know, I wasn't like, oh crap, I've never fought, you know, I've never been against someone so tall. I was like, all right, I gotta, I gotta make sure I, I get on the inside. Like, you know, like I, I, nothing, I wasn't scared about it or anything like that. I was just like, okay, this is what I gotta do, you know, mm -hmm. which I hadn't experienced someone that tall before. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so, you know, we go in there and it's, it's very sur surreal, like fights, you know, you go out there and it happens very fast. You go out there, they say your name and then the rain starts and before you know it, you're in a fight, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, the reason why it, you may not understand why this is so big, the whole mental thing is. So Amy went into this with six fights, six fights, never doing a tournament before, never been on a national stage before. And the girls she competed against, all of them, done it before, been there, had multiple fights, probably over 30, 40, 50 fights, who knows, maybe even 100. So that's a lot of experience for a girl that's going in there with six fights. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was a huge, huge thing that you did. Yeah. So you beat the first girl, and everything went as planned. Share, share a special moment of the first fight, the girl, that fight. Um... The first round was hard for me because it was me trying to figure out because, you know, she had a long reach and, you know, um, you know, and it, it was me trying to figure out how to, you know, and I, and like, I, I struggled that first round trying to figure it out, trying mm -hmm. to get in in there. You know what I mean? And, and she, she was, was awkward too. Yeah. She, and she was doing well with like how, you know, st keeping mm -hmm. her distance and everything like that. And so, and so I remember between round one and two, we sat there. And I looked at you, I was like, I know I, I must win these two, these next two, and I have to give a standing eight count. I have to. You like, told me? Like, I was like, cool, well, you are about to tell me, and I was like, no, I know I need to. I need to win these two. So, like, because you're telling me you, you – and I was like, I, I have to win it. Like, I, I knew. I knew where I was. Like, you know what I mean? I knew exactly what needed to be done of me to win this fight. And, um, you know, and so – you know, and I was not defeated by the first round. I was just more so like, okay, I got, this is what I got to do, and I'm going to do it. And um, and I think th there's one moment that I had when I was talking to myself, and it was – and th that that's what changed the whole tournament. Like, I was just like I, – I said to myself, I was like, Amy, you have worked so hard to be here. You are not going to go out on a first fight. You're going to go to the end. You worked too hard – to not go all the way through. And yep. I remember saying that to myself and then just something clicked with me and I just was like, it was game on and I was determined and I just was, you know, just, just like, it, like tunnel vision. Yeah. Yep. All right. After win one, 
What was the thing that, do you remember what I would always say after each fight? Yeah, so it's like, all right, we celebrate this tonight, and then tomorrow happens, we forget about it, we focus yep. on the next. We have short-term memory loss. Short-term memory loss. Yeah. So, um, you know, and so with that one, I was definitely emotional about that one, you know. It was a big deal, but my whole mindset changed after that fight. So, like. You had belief. Yeah. More. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, you have to believe in yourself. Like, but it, it's just, it's crazy. It becomes real. It becomes real. It's, it, it's very, like, you say you're going to do something, you believe in yourself that you're going to do something, and then when it happens, it's like, you still have that moment of, like, I freaking did it. You know what I mean? And it, it's still, like, a, like a wow moment. You know, you know what I mean? And, and so after that, with every fight after that, like, like when after the fight I knew I won like mm -hmm. like there's been fights in the past like before nationals like you know like I think it was just because like your adrenaline's going I'd be like I, you know what I mean yeah but I was very much present and knew what was going on that I knew I won and and so you know when they raised my hand I was very humble and thankful and I I worked I knew I worked hard for it and I I earned that win and I was just set on okay got the next one now like it was a hard time to be like celebrate it like yeah. mentally like because i was just ready for the next one because i was focused on winning this and taking it home so like i i didn't get too excited like i would of course was like you know very proud and very happy of course but i was just like okay now the next now the next you know and, and, and my whole mindset changed like i was just like and and, and, and i remember telling you too that was the number three seed you beat yeah so you told me that and i was just like um yeah, you told me afterwards. You always told me afterwards. But she actually told me, like, she told me she's, uh, she, you know, she she had, she had was a really nice girl afterwards. She said, hey, I was not expecting that, you know. And, you know, we kind of talked because we were talking a little bit because it took a, a little while for them to yeah, get the decision. Yeah, and said, the girl you fight to, the next is really good because that girl you fight Yeah, next. I know. She was, I, I know. And you're you're probably like, <laughs> you're like, why did you have to say something? Yeah, and because uh, the girl that, you fought next the number one because she because she was prepared to fight that girl knocked her down and and she was like yeah i fought in her three times i, like, I know you're fighting next she's like that, girl's, that she's girl's like, good yeah that's what she said and you know what though like she did say that but i but but i didn't i didn't let it get to me like i i didn't mm. know i didn't i didn't think too much about it i kind of let it go out my head mm. because in my head i'm like okay well that's that's how you think of it like you're i'm not you nope. like i'm me so you know what i mean Who so cares? yeah so i didn't i i honestly forgot she said that like i remember her saying it in the moment but i didn't go back to my room that night and go oh Ooh, the girl's tough like she, like I, I totally forgot about it that's i really good. did i really did that's the worries i get someone's trying to plant a seed in you that fucks with you yeah i can't control that seed you know which I mean? which at the hotel i ran into another one and they try to they try to get in my head about the girl that was fighting in the first fight mm -hmm. they're like you know what i mean they try to tell me stuff too so yeah. so i just learned to just like you know just and, and that was a nice thing too shutting down social media i turned my phone on do not disturb so for 12 days i was in this bubble whose idea was that you who why do you remember why i said that yeah because i told you and levi that because it, it, it could be meant to, like i mean and it's amazing we have so much support from everyone but it it can be mentally draining and keep you not focused. So what did I tell you? And so you told Explain. us to, you told us to delete our social media apps. And did you listen? Yeah. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Try to be hella confident. Look at this girl. Yeah. Yeah. And lying through her teeth. No, man. Tell the people the truth. I deleted after two days. After two days, this girl did not listen. But okay. I told. But I didn't go on it. That's nah, nah, I didn't nah. go on it. I really didn't go on it. All right, go. I didn't go Defend on yourself. it. yourself. What are you gonna say? I didn't go on it. I posted something and then you said, I posted one thing and you said, get off of it. And then I got off of it after that. I didn't delete the app, but I got off of it. And then that's when you leave. I go, you know, you can still get your passwords, right? Yeah. I said, delete that shit. <laughs> I did. Because you were still going on it. No, I wasn't looking at yeah, anything. I, I promise you're you. lying again through your teeth. I'm you not. You give me the Blake look. I know you're lying. <laughs> What's the play like? Yeah, you're doing the Piper right now. <laughs> the Piper. No, but I really wasn't looking at like what people were saying sure. or anything like that. I really wasn't. Okay, but anyways, I told her to completely. You don't delete. believe me. I told her to delete that shit completely, and I did. it was because I did. I did. All right, so now tell us about the second fight. Second fight. Um, now you're fighting the number one girl. Um. So you had told me with this girl. 
to like you know like make sure that you know like you stare her down in the face and you show her that you're you're here you know you did tell me like like have your confidence here you know and like you had told me that um um that she would be like she's usually an aggress you know the aggressor and pushes forward but I was gonna do it and I was gonna do it better and so um so, and I remember she, she like that, that was the first one that was like, I remember her staring, she was just staring like deep down into my soul. So mm-hmm. I, I, I stared right back to her, you know, like, and we were just like both in that moment, just staring, no one broke, no one broke, you know what I mean? But, uh, I just was, I was confident in what I had. So as we were backing up, I kind of smiled and I was like, you have no idea, like, what like because i know that people underestimate me i know it you know what mm. i mean and so i i like i i'm ready to bring the war so um it was it was like I, w- I was having fun i was having fun for sure yeah i remember what you told me after that fight you remember what you told me uh i said that fight was an easier fight you didn't say easier <laughs> do i try to sugarcoat cool? quit lying to the people amy she got out and she said that was easy that's exactly what you said. Do you remember? Okay. I remember. Yeah, but I, and not that like she was easy, but it was just that it it was an easy fight for me. <laughs> it was. I, I ain't mad at it you. It was. Hey, hey, I'm not it saying It was nothing. because. I'm trying to play back everything for everyone. It was easy for me because th- the first person is like, it was me trying to figure out how to get in on there and like, you know, but with this fight, like anything I wanted to do, I could do. Like, and I mean, the fighter is a very talented fighter. It's not that she's easy. It's just that what I wanted to do, I could do. Like mm. I had control of it. Like I didn't have to work so hard to get in on someone that was 5'11". And, you know, and I was able to, you know, and, and with this fight, like, I mean, we have to, we fight different ways depending on who our opponent is, but I love fighting the way I got to fight with this fight, you know, and it was a lot of stuff that we'd been working on, you mm-hmm. know, and, you know, like three, three, three back and, you know, it was yeah. just fun. It was, it was just a fun and, you know, and, you know, and I have respect for everyone in there in that, in that ring. And it, it was like, every fight is a fight. Like the mm-hmm. fight itself is not easy, but for me it was it was easy as far as mentally to do it. Sounds like a very defensive girl. All right. And uh, tell us about the third fight now. But uh, the third fight. Uh, semifinals. Oh, look, she's getting, she's getting all. What, what? Oh, so you got to take a sip out of your tea for the third fight, but now fight number one and two? Mm-hmm. Fight looking away. Go ahead. Tell the people. What? Oh, yeah, your favorite fighter. Go, go. Your favorite fighter. You recruit you recruit her yet? Go. <laughs> People want to know about the fight, not about who's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna get replaced by uh, this one. Jose just loves this girl. As a boxer, Ollie, as a boxer. <laughs> Amy, go and tell the story about the fight. Why are you bringing that up? Go. <laughs> because you made me cry. <laughs> you made me cry. After the fight. All right, go, Amy. So, so mad about it. <laughs> I cried like a baby. <laughs> go. All right. So what happened this fight? Okay, so she's she's southpaw. She uh and she's tall. She's tall, tough looking opponent. Mm-hmm. Um and all that but i'm not worried about that like because mm-hmm. a lot of girls i fought like f- have fought they they look tough they look you know um you know so i, I don't get worried about that um so i was actually and that semifinals it was semifinals mm-hmm. and actually so this was a little bit more challenging because for that so now this is my second fight in a row you know so and like i've never been in a tournament before so and it was in the morning it, yeah it's the morning so now i've i fought in two fights in one week so which i've never before, done when you fought it, number one it was late at night it was late at night and by the time we get back and eat it's like midnight and yep. then i have to wake up at to, five in the morning i have to wake up and to weigh in yeah at five in the morning to weigh in mm-hmm. and then these fights start at 11 so the other ones the weigh-ins you get to eat you have you get to rest and then it's an evening fight so this one you know it, it's more it challenging. took a toll on your body 
it, it, yeah, it's, it's, more, it's, it's more challenging. And now it's, now it's your third fight of the week, you know? Well, depending on, you know, if you had a buy or not, but for me, I, I was, I started the first day that the yeah, late females, they gave you the tough route. Yeah. So I felt the most, which I, I'm glad, I'm glad like for a lot of reasons, I'm glad there's a lot of reasons why I'm glad. And I wanted the harder bracket. We're going to talk about these reasons in a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so that one was a little bit more challenging, you know, uh, you know, I was okay with it though. Like I had, Cause like when I'm set in my mind and I'm there, like okay, this is what it is. Okay, okay, it's morning. That's what I'm gonna do. Like I don't like go. Okay, that's gonna be hard. That's a morning one. Like, and I just fought late at night. I just, it you know, cause you can't put doubt in your head. You you go okay, this is what you got to do then. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so how was the fight? Why are you peeing around the bush? You don't want to tell people about the fight. <laughs> <laughs> not true okay right. so she's southpaw uh-huh you said that um and then uh, you know she's longer and so this was another fight where i was gonna have to you know definitely get on the inside and fight on the inside again and so um you know once again i you know like i, I did struggle that first round again trying to get on the inside mm-hmm. and and then you know and then the southpaw but um and then it was it was definitely another fight where I had to, without a doubt, win round two and three with no doubt because that first round, like I, like I didn't make it dominant enough. Yep. And anything else? No, no other things you want to say about that fight? No. Um. Wait, is there something you want me to no, say about no, that fight? No. I thought you, maybe you had anything else. Anything else no, before we go I, to the I, final? No, and that fight, it was so once I'm in like the second round, I was like, I got this, you know? And like, I. Because you had a really good second round. And yeah, the second round. E- yeah, and I just, it just, it was just like, I, I've i gotten to a point where I can adjust now with the help of the things that you say, but mm-hmm. like, I'm starting to be able to do that on my own too. Like yeah. to where I'm like, okay. And I adjust like how I need to adjust, you know? And I, you know, and I, and then like, then the second round came and I felt in control again and mm-hmm. with the second and third round and, you know, and, and did what I do. So I, I so then that so was then fun. You won. All right. Yeah. I won. Um, and you know what? I didn't even think about it. Like, I didn't even realize, like, I didn't even think about, oh, this is semifinals. Like, I didn't even, I was just like, okay, I fight again. Like, I was so okay. stuck in that. You're on I didn't a, even you're re- on. I was on a mission, yeah. Yep. I didn't even realize that was the semifinals. And then so, after that, it was like, oh, you're in the finals. So why'd you cry? Since you said after you cried. Tell people why you cried. <laughs> because, like, her style is very, like in and out flashy kind of a style and flashy where you get flashy from all right keep going <laughs> she's been i've been hearing this flashy shit since this day all right because and then, because you have told me so many times over the years oh i love the style of you know box in and out and around and it's flashy it's my favorite style that's how i all want all my boxers to look blah 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 blah. blah. i never said that you are full of shit and, i never and said then, i want all my boxers then, to look then, like that and then like and you know and that fight was that fight mentally was hard for me uh and uh and so it was it was a hard fight for me and and so um and and you're like i'm glad i'm glad it was yeah i'm glad it was hard for you blah 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 blah. do you remember why what did i say because you said the other one was easy exactly i told her this after she beat the number one girl i noticed it in amy (laughs) amy changed Yes. What did I do? You the way you everything, and I, I was like, look, she's getting. It's good to get confident, though, but you're getting way above the thing. You telling telling national fights are easy and shit. I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with this girl? So, I said after the fight, I said, you know what? I'm glad the fight was tough. <laughs> I'm glad because you have to be a hundred. Because look. Once you start winning, you can't go into the zone that you're, oh, like, it's this is gonna all going to be easy yeah, because yeah. it's not. No, that's true. So that's why I, I told her, I'm like, I'm glad it was tough so that you can not feel like it's always going to be a walk in the park and you can always be 100% ready. But I but wasn't Amy even... took it. Amy took it as of, oh, I like this girl. And I, Amy took it as, oh, I'm going to trade Amy for this girl. That's what she took it as. She was like, oh, Jose likes to trade. Jose wants to train her. No, because you're you're like you're like yeah, she was really good. She had a good style. She did. 
Yeah, for a round. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> for a round. No. <laughs> So, <laughs> so, so now you're telling me I'm glad that happened to you. And no, and I, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so, so, and then so, what I said too, I'm like, when did I ever say that's what I wanted? I always tell you I do whatever style wins. <laughs> do I or deny that I say that? Well, I anyway. say whatever wins. I don't care what it looks like, as long as you win. That's all I well, care about. I want everyone to know that Jose made me cry. Because after that fight, I'm walking back to the hotel and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you don't like the way I box. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not flashy enough. <laughs> yeah, she was literally crying. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, this girl crying and she in the final. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with this girl? <laughs> so I went from being confident to now, whoop. <laughs> You're like, what did I just do? And then I had a little talk with her and then everything after. Because that was when we were going to the hotel. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we each showered, and got ready, and we went to go eat real quick. Mm-hmm. And that's when I talked to you. Remember? <laughs> I had a little conversation with Amy, and I broke it down with her, and I just got her to explain what happened and why we were the way we were and everything that happened. And and then we forgot about it. And then we and went back right back to short memory loss. Yeah. Short memory loss. And that's the thing I tell them, and especially at a tournament like that, you have to have a short memory loss. Like, mm-hmm. you should do it all the time with all your fights. Don't let your highs get too high, your lows get too low. Yeah. My boxing coach used to always tell me that. Yeah. When you're doing good, don't get so cocky and you think of this shit. Yeah. And when you're doing bad, don't get so bad and think you ain't shit. You yeah. know, just stay stay at level, you know what I mean? And um, that's why we have short memory loss. Forget about it. So we celebrated it, went to sleep, woke up. And now you're in the final. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell us which about is, that is, day. Which, that day was tight. Which is crazy because, okay, so every day you're going to weigh-ins. First day, so many people. Mm-hmm. So many people, like, weighing in, like, like thousands, right? Yeah, a lot of people. And and each day you go to go weigh-in, like, you know, like, you start, you know, you, you see, okay, I recognize you. You're still in it. Oh, that person I saw, they're not here anymore. It's like elimination, you know? It's like, yeah. you know? And then the girl that, the fuck, this blonde girl's still here. What'd they say? You're still here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they would say that to Amy. You're still here? You're still here? <laughs> are you lost? <laughs> Looking for your hotel? What are you doing here? <laughs> you're still here? Yeah. <laughs> they're like, oh, you're here again. <laughs> like, you should have seen their face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh so anyways you know and so that day was crazy because it's like ghost town now and it's like it's like it's really cool it's like really cool but it's like you're just like it becomes very real like what you because you, you don't process what you're doing as much because you're just so like tunnel vision but it's like wow it's pretty empty around here you know yeah. and it was just down to the final so you you know everyone that was there was in the finals now you know, so, um, you know, weighed in and then uh, uh, ate and then went back and relaxed and got, you know, and then until we had to leave to get prepared. So, um, so every fight, every fight that I had up to this fight, I was very, oh, yeah. oh my God. Uh-huh. Get closer. Yeah, I'm like, what's something on me? No. <laughs> um, so I was very, um, like, just confident, like not, like my nerves weren't going on overload or anything i was ready and um this so we did our normal everything and then i did my meditation and i was in a good place i was calm i was calm i was ready and then you know and then when i was done all of a sudden just this amount of nerves came on me and i i got really nervous yeah i know she got nervous because this girl couldn't even talk and for amy not to be able to talk yeah. something's got to be wrong yeah we want to get her gloves and she couldn't even talk i'm like what the hell's wrong with this girl <laughs> and so and so i told you i'm like you know because it's good to always let your coach know where you are mentally and what's ever going on you know and so like i've always been straightforward with you and because you need to know where i am at and i'm like i'm really nervous <laughs> that's what i told you i was yeah. like just so you know i'm really nervous <laughs> that's what i said <laughs> as we're walking into the you know and then it was it, the walking was different everything was different remember yeah it was all dark yeah, yeah, it was all dark, and they had now closed uh, because they down, went down to three rings, and then the warm up room was actually closed off. Now mm-hmm. you couldn't even see the rings because before you could see it, mm-hmm. you could see all the rings in that room, but now they had like um, 
like a dark entrance for you to enter into and it's just it's very different and it's it's very not very many people there you know the championship day yeah came out with firecrackers and everything yeah you, you walk through and yeah the fire and you walk through it and yeah. um and they announce your name and then they did that differently so like they had bouts going in each ring all day but they they did bout the ring one two three bout one two three and then they waited for each one to be finished and they announced the winner in one and then the winner in two and the winner in three so they kept it all like mm-hmm. the same sequence in my personal opinion i thought this was the most beautiful fight you fought out yeah. of all of them it yeah. was perfect the way you fought from the beginning to the end yeah and since you threw me under the bus for uh, saying that I like the semifinals girl, why don't you say who liked this girl? <laughs> Jason. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to throw me in the bus, you better throw him under the bus too. Yeah, he's obsessed with this girl. <laughs> <laughs> and and speaking of obsession, Melanie, the girl she trains with, there was another girl that <laughs> Melanie liked. So Amy is just crushing these girls at – yeah, uh, Melanie, my teammate, was uh, like, it's it was like her favorite person was in my weight bracket. And and I saw she, her weigh ins every day. Yep. And that that's like her favorite she girl. She saw her every day except on the final day. She didn't see her. I anymore. didn't see her. Hey. Anymore. <laughs> I, I remember saying it in a match. I was like, I was like, hey, your, your, uh, your number one celebrity is not here. <laughs> I was like, will you be my fan? <laughs> yeah. So does that mean you're my fan now? <laughs> so. Um, championship day, you win. What were your emotions afterwards? Um, it was we did what we said we were gonna do. It was just like, like at that moment, like it was like it happens, and all of a sudden, like they raise your hand, and then they're giving you a belt, and it, you know, and it, it, it's 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 an overwhelming feeling, you know, it's yeah. crazy, and it's just. I think it took me a minute to pro- – it took me a while to process, like, what really just happened. Because I'm still in this, like, go, 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 like, mindset, like, you know. And so, um, you know, it was a very cr- surreal moment, but it was also, like, I'm still, like, not processing it yet, you yeah. know. But, like, you know, like, at the end, I knew I had won the fight. I knew, you know, and I was confident. So I wasn't, like, scared of what's going to happen. You know, I was confident in my performance. Do you, do you remember one thing that happened after the fight? Do you want me to remind you? What did the, the president of USA Boxing tell you afterwards? That he told me first, and then I told you, and you didn't believe me, and then he himself told you afterwards. I don't remember exactly what he said. He said, out of the entire... Out of all the females that competed in the tournament, you were the best female boxer. Oh, yeah. I didn't believe you. <laughs> you did tell me that. And she didn't believe me. And then right after I told you and you didn't believe me, he walked up to you and he told you also. Remember? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was like, I was just so proud of you. Yeah. Super proud of you. And then she's, yeah, it was just amazing. For yeah. me, it was amazing. Yeah. So. It was just, it's just like, it's like you go to something and like everything that you go through to get to that moment and- like I had dreamed about it, I had worked for it for like oh, this past year almost, you know. And you say you're gonna do, and then I also wrote a letter. I wrote yep. a letter that day. Mm-hmm. I wrote a letter. And you gave it to me. And I said I wrote down, you know, and I'm someone like I'm not gonna write something down unless I know that that you know because I'm not gonna write something down and then it not happen. You know what I mean? Yep. So I wrote a letter, like to myself, you know, um, that. Amy Minter is going to be national champion today and you know and and like my reasons why and why I'm doing this and I wrote that to myself and then I handed it to you before the fight and it's just it's you know it's it is a moment of just like you know you did what you you set your mind to do you know and it's just such an amazing thing so what tip would you give to anyone that's out there that's looking to compete nationally to win a national tournament, what tip would you give them that you would give that you would recommend? What tip? I mean, obviously, like you know, there there has to be like the work ethic and what you have to you know put what you have to dedicate towards boxing and your skill and do everything you can. But none of that matters if your mindset is not there, your mentality is not there. None of that, none of that matters. You can be the best boxer 
in the world. And if your mentality is not there, then you will not be able to do what you are able to do because you don't believe that you can do it. Yep, the confidence. So, so, you, so you, the tip is what? What is the tip? Is that you truly 100% being honest with yourself, believe, have to believe in yourself. You, like to the core you really have to do it like and you know and it's not just talking about it because a lot of people will talk and say they do but it's like you really to the core have to believe in yourself yeah i like it all right so we're getting close to the end of all of uh, this mm-hmm. podcast uh but before we do that i i always do random questions and things like that okay uh but since this is, has to do with USA boxing and we're talking about boxing and nationals and all this. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to ask you a random question that has to do with nationals. Mm-hmm. What is something from nationals that was nothing like you expected it to be like that has shocked you when you got there mm-hmm. or it was just different? What is it? Is there anything that was not like what you thought it was like? I didn't put too much expectations on it. Uh, so there was nothing where I was just like, whoa, not expecting that. Mm-hmm. I am um, just because I was prepared for the unknown. Anything. Yeah. So I really didn't feel that way about anything about anything because I was prepared for the unknown. And I was just in a mindset that because if you get too much about, oh, it needs to be this way, it can set you so off your game. Yep. It'll so fuck you big time, um, you know, so there wasn't I, I can't really honestly say anything to answer that because I was in the mindset to be prepared. Cool. Um, all right. So I actually posted on Instagram. If they had any questions, anything like that. Uh-huh. Um, I'll start with the question you got. Someone gave you a question, right? Mm-hmm. And the question it was for you. Do you know who asked this question? Emma. Emma. All right. Emma said this. How would you advise people to focus on their energy? Turn off news, social media, visualize yourself already at the win. If it's self-doubt creeps in, would you tell yourself to get out of it? So, How do you answer Emma's question? I mean, and that was huge, especially in 2020, because like news, social media, Instagram, everywhere you look, there was something negative, something dramatic, like something going on with the mm-hmm. world. And our world has been in chaos. And, um, you know, so I think that was a big thing challenging for people this year, especially. So for me, I honestly, I had a goal and what I needed to do. And if I saw anything, if I was on social media and if I saw anything I didn't like, I either unfollowed the account or I muted it, you know, um, you know, or if I had a friend that just was a little bit like that was speaking about something that I couldn't have in my mind at that time, I muted their account. Like I protect my brain so much to what I put into it. The same as what I protect. Like, so like you have to protect yourself so much for what you want. And so you have to create your environment. You have to control because you can't create, you, you can't control the world, but you can control your, your settings, who you surround yourself with to what you let affect you mentally. So I, I made my circle very small to what I let, you know, like let, affect my brain Mm -hmm. like you you have to get into that zone you have to so as far as the news or anything i mean i don't have the i i I stayed off of it i just blocked it out yeah i didn't want anything negative and then another thing what i did was every morning when i'm getting ready i like to get ready like and take my time to get ready i sit down and and take my time to get ready and and uh so i have uh i listen to motivational um, stuff for business, for, for sports. That's what I do. And, and so that puts my, my mind in the right mindset of what I need to think about. It just, I have all yeah. kinds of ones that I listen to cool. and it just reminds me of who I am every day, what I've been through. And so that was that. And then was there anything else about the question I didn't answer? Oh, yeah. how you visualize yourself? Yeah. 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 Just, uh, you answered it good. yeah. Okay. Uh, Bert from the gym, he comes here in the gym. He, uh, he asks, how long did it take you to confidently step into the ring? Um, like to fight first mm-hmm. about two years, two years. Yeah. It, right. took, it took two years. Yeah. Cause I didn't believe in myself. Julius, you remember Julius. This is a special one because Julius actually was one of the first guys you would train with four years ago when you first got here. Do you remember Julius? You remember Julius? You got it. I'll show you a picture of Julius. But Julius asked this. 
Uncle Jew. I would call him Uncle oh, Jew. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's yeah. what I would call okay, him. Remember now, Uncle Jew? Yeah, now I know you're talking about. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, he said, what kept you motivated along your journey? Um, my struggle. The struggle. Um, who was your favorite person to train with back in the day? He didn't ask this. Somebody else did. Do you, is there any person that you really like training with from back in the day? Jacob asked this. Um, I mean, honestly, like, always with Angel. Because we started together, yeah. yeah, and you know, we've always been the ones to compete, and then we've always been in competition with each other. Yeah. Of like, who's gonna be in paler first? Who's gonna be this? And yep. you know, so Angel. Um, what's Amy's next goal now that she is a national champion? So what comes next for Amy? B's automotive detailing asks this question. Congrats, by the way, on the baby. B just had a baby. Oh, congratulations! Honestly, I learned that. The only limits that you have are the ones that you put on yourself. And now, like, I have realized that there's no limit, like, to what I can do. So what's the next goal? And Now that you're a national champion, that's what he asked. What's the next goal? What are you going to do now? You're a national champion. What's next? Be, be the best boxer that I can be and, and, and go to the top. All right. Wherever the top may be. Uh, Lisa heard. She said, when you are facing your opponent, what's on your mind? You have no idea what you're going to get yourself into. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Uh, how much hours a day do you train? Oh, what would it be about four, like all put together with all everything, right. like with the running and the sprinting and then training. And oh, no, it, it, I wrap my hands. Does that count? I don't know. Takes for me. No, nah, that takes forever. <laughs> takes forever. So I don't know. Is it about three and a half who hours? Was a, who was the first person to get an autograph from you? Uh, Disney. Disneyland. Yeah. Hey, he was who asked the question. <laughs> Disneyland. <laughs> Disneyland said, "Who got your very first autograph?" <laughs> yep. He asked that. He, he was, and he then was, and he then, was trying to get a shout out. Yep, and then and then every time before I have a fight, he goes. Do me a favor, punch them in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he says that every time. Do me a favor, punch them in the mouth for me. Well, he asked for that. <laughs> no, right. no, he because because when you wrote that thing, I was I was doing my first autograph uh, at the finals. Uh, he was like, "No, I had your first autograph." Because <laughs> he said the first time I fought, he says, "I want your autograph because you're going places." That's what he said. No, that's tight. Yeah. Um, Dina asked, "What's the hardest part of your journey?" Um. The hardest part is, you, you know, uh, facing your what you've been through and and truly healing from it, and um, and and also through that facing your own flaws, and you know, like not just what has happened to you, but your own flaws, yeah, and having to face them and then recover, you know, and and, and learn how to to um, overcome them. All right, boxing fan three two one on Instagram asked. What is the hardest punch a female you ever felt from a female you ever felt? <laughs> I know the answer to this, but you can answer it. Steroids. All right. Steroids. <laughs> she fought this girl in Oakland and the girl was fucking on steroids. Long <laughs> story short. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, Victor, two guns boxing. Uh, he asked, do you want to turn pro someday? I've never really thought about that. Okay, so <laughs> I'm assuming that's a no or a yes. I don't know. I never really thought about She never that. thought about it. All right, King Dan. I, I, it's just because I think about what's right here right in now. front of me right now. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, Danny, King Dan Photography asks, do you have any people that doubted you? Mm, more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot. A lot of people doubted you. <laughs> more than believed in me. More than believed in you. Yes. Uh all right, so you had, that's all the Instagram um, uh, questions. Now uh, I'm gonna ask you: Is there anything you want to add? Any anything? Maybe people you want to thank? Anything yeah, you want to say? I, yeah, I way, mean, you're gonna, before we end this podcast. Yeah, I mean, I I do want to thank everyone that has had a part of my journey. I mean, like my journey started a long time ago, and so 
you know, there's people that still aren't even here today, you know, um, you know, and I mean, even someone like Evan, you know what I mean? Like just everyone that had a part of my journey, I'm very thankful to because you have come into my life and played a role in my life, Mm -hmm. either if it was for my mentality, for my boxing, every person that I've sparred and teammates, you know, all, all of our coaches is, um, our, our gym members, like the support, it, it just like when I, like the surprise party we had when I walked in here and everyone was here, like, I just like, I, I, it was really hard for me not to cry. Cause like, I have always, I've just never had support like this. And, you know, going into something like this, you do it for yourself and you, and I'm okay. Like if I, if I'm, if it's just me against the world, that's okay. Cause I want it for me. But mm. having the support does make it a lot easier. It really, really does. And I'm very thankful to everybody. I mean, I, I, I can, I, it would take me forever to list everyone's names, but I'm just very, very, very grateful, blessed and thankful. All right. Um, I want to thank somebody uh, besides Amy. Thank you for the whole experience. Thank you for allowing me to live through nationals. I, like I said, that was my first time there. I was never able to participate. So thank you for la- allowing me to live my dream uh, through you. So I want to say thank you to you. Um, and I also want to say thank you to God. Every day we prayed before doing it. And I say I'll give all glory to God. Yep. And um, I haven't mentioned God too much throughout this whole time. And I want to make sure I give the glory back to him as he watched over us I as agree. I asked for him. I agree. Uh, we asked for his guidance before every fight. And... Um, I just want to make sure I say thank you to him. Um, well, thank you guys for listening. This is one hell of a podcast. Shit, it was like five hours long. Uh, of course, with Amy here, of course it was going to be five hours long. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I talk a lot. <laughs> I hope you guys have a great, great Monday. But before you do that, thank you guys for listening. Um, yes, send us you. some feedback. Let me know what you thought about this episode. And uh, this next episode coming up next Monday is going to be about relationships with Ricky, Kelly, and myself. We share a lot of insights on our relationships, which is very interesting, very good uh, for you guys to listen. Um, But have a good week. Anything you want to say? No, thank you for everyone that's here listening, watching. Thank you very much. All right. We out. (laughs) 